Welcome everybody to Charles A. Henry Field in Hiram, Ohio for today's game between Ohio Wesleyan and the Hiram Terriers. Of course, I am Bill Grazer Rayback and I'm joined by Al Matthews. Mal, how are you today? Good, very good. good. Interesting matchup. We've got Ohio Wesleyan, who is two and two in the NCAC and three and three overall. And the Hiram Terriers are 0 and 6 overall and 0 and 4 in the NCAC, searching for their first uh, win of the season. And now, you know, uh, we were just talking about Ohio Wesleyan. The thing that jumps out at us when we look at them is they're extremely young. Five sophomores, two freshmen. Boy, that means, you know, they're 500 with a very young team. That really spells out some good things here in the future. We're future. Some kids out there. It's like they are going to be ready to play. And then, of course, Highland. Um, we've seen the Terriers twice this year. We've seen our best uh, Highland and we saw them later against Denison. And they are just uh, struggling to put some offense you know, they, they have a couple of decent inside linebackers. And number 36, Dylan Ballier, 220 pounds senior from West Calgary High School in Chester, Ohio. And Dylan has uh, 46 total tackles, 2.5 fouls, and one interception. And then his running mate an inside linebacker is Gavin Cruiser, number 40. He's 5'10, 23. He is from Utah. Uh, and he has 49 tackles, one interception, and 1.5 tackles. And they really have You know, if you look up front, they've got a few kids that have from the university. But really, I think for Hiram to be successful against Wesleyan, their defensive line is going to step up. Also, you know, Conrad, Ohio Wesleyan attack. Um, you know, and speaking of defense, on the other side, number six, Markel Henry, 5'10, 250 pound senior from Davis Conrad. And I think Hiram's biggest thing they're going to have to do today is they're going to have to figure out how to stop number six because he's going to run. And if you look on the other side, they have Tyler Yanks, six foot two hundred and ten pound junior from the outfield of Orange. He's got 25 tackles and three TFs. Oh, so they're going to be quarterback for Hiram is going to have any success throwing the ball. He's really going to have to address those two defenses. long call, but not a singling or is it? They may have to come up and be in the combo. These guys, and then it's going to be blood. Right. Well, you know, taking a look at some key players here for the two teams. For Hiram, Sean uh, Todd, as we just talked about, number three, is 94 of 124 passing this year for 1,079 yards. Uh, in line, interceptions and zero games. They need to get the passing attack. You know, short passes. They need to control the offense, and if they can't get a number of passes completed, it's difficult to rely simply on the running. Uh, they have number 11, Raekwon Davis-Rufford, 
and he's got 26 receptions this year. He's Hiram's leading receiver, and his running mate number 81, Jarvis Green. He has 20 receptions for 13.8 yard average. We talked about the two inside linebackers, and the third component on defense is number 12, uh, Tavante Rebus. Rebus has 32 tackles, two TFLs, two interceptions, and six PBUs. So those are the key players for Hiram. The keys for Hiram victory, establish a rhythm and ball control offense. Number two, control Ohio West. Wesleyan's defensive ends, Markel Henry and Tyree Gates. And number three, keep drives alive by, you know, getting better on third down conversion. Um, you know, looking at Ohio Wesleyan, their key players are number three, Tyler Webb has 27 receptions this year for 16.4 yard average and six TDs. And he leads the team in touchdowns. And they, they seem to run a two quarterback system, Al, as we were talking about earlier. Number five, Caden Buzza, 6'2", 200-pound senior from Winchester, Virginia. He is listed as a starter, and he has thrown for 847 yards, six TDs. He's completing 51% of his passes. But it seems that he's been maybe alternating with number 15, Austin Bowman, 6'3", 205-pound senior from Hurricane, West Virginia. And uh, Womack has completed 55 or 76 passes for 72%. And he has 605 yards and six TDs also. So between the two of them, they've thrown 12 touchdowns. And it seems that those two are in some kind of rotational system. Um, when we look at uh, the other man in the uh, backfield there would be number 25 running back, Devin Hall. He rushed for 251 yards. He averages 3.6 yards per carry, three TDs, and had seven receptions for a 10.9 yard average. And that was a TD there. Also, he'll be the key man in the back for the battle of Bishops. As we talked about, Barkel Henry, the defensive end, 30 tackles, 9.5 TFLs, and five sacks. He has been controlled by Hiram. Um, number 11. Drew Thornton, the free safety for Bishops, he has one interception, which was returned for TD. He has 57 tackles, 2.5 TFLs, and one sack. And then the other player, which is his number 13, Charlie Hunnison. Outside linebacker has two interceptions, one he returned for TD. 31 total tackles, two TFLs, and half a sack. The pressures for the keys to an Ohio Western victory is pressure and disrupt to Hiram, passing down, get to the second level and control Hiram's two inside linebackers. And the third thing is hit explosive plays early and often. And if they're able to do that, Hiram's going to find themselves in the same situation. So, um, of the two teams, but look at um, the teams that have so far. Ohio is led by Tom Watts. Watts, I know he came from Baldwin Wallace over to Ohio Wesley. And in their last game, they beat Kenyon 48 7. Uh, Hiram, in their last game, they dropped uh, you know, 21 7, lost to Pittsburgh. So, it was usually pretty solid. So, you know, for them to be able to uh, handle it, and I guess that's an accomplishment from Terriers when we look at that aspect. Um, and they are led by uh, uh, Coach Jack Rosinski. Jack is in his third year. And, uh, you know, so, you know, moving forward, we'll see how this plays out for those two teams. Now, let's take a look here. Um, run down some of the uh, action in the NCAC. Other games starting at 1 o'clock are Wabash, Denison, and Ohio Western. Uh, at the 2 o'clock slot, we've got Wabash. At Looster, 4 p.m. Wittenberg is at Oberlin. 
Uh, in the OAC today, we have the Capitol, Union 30, and Northern John Carroll, 2 o'clock. Marietta at Wilmington, 2 o'clock. Thunderbird at Thunderbird, 5 p.m. And in the late night game is Baldwin Wallace at Muskingum, 7 o'clock. In the Heartland Conference, we've got Manchester at Bluffton, 1.30 p.m., Rose Holman at Franklin, 1.30 p.m., Hanover at Mount St. Joseph, 1.30 p.m., and Defiance at Anderson, 1.30 p.m. In the President's Athletic Conference, Geneva at Peel, 1 p.m., St. Vincent at Waynesburg, 1 p.m., Carnegie at Bethany, 1 p.m., Westminster at Case Western Reserve, 2 p.m., and the late till in the PC City at Allegheny. So, those are the teams that we cover during the course of the year, and we will give you periodic scores on how those teams are doing. Um, you know, Al, uh, we were here last time for the Denison game. Uh, you know where you can get a world class meal? No. I, have you ever heard of the world famous Iron Bar Saloon? I believe I have. Okay. You know, you had five miles to the first time. It's state route 422. And take a left and go a half mile, and you will come across this famous Iron Bar Saloon where we ate last time. And, uh, yeah, the way you were there last time. I had a cheeseburger. Okay. okay. Yeah, the Boulder River, the Crooked Creek River, yes, where the river. And uh, I had chicken wings, which I would highly recommend with uh, some French fries. So if uh, you were in Ireland, again, take 700 north to 422, take a left, and you go for a half mile, and you will come from the state. World famous Iron Bar Saloon. Do you need signs for shirts for any occasion? If you do, visit Sign Stations at 11. Maple Street in Orwell, Ohio, or give them a call at 440 437 7446. Become a supporter of Campus Nation and Division. I think for the Science Nation, that's an option. There's no sense. Call it. You're right there. 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 And for just fifteen dollars, you'll be mentioned at every game for the rest of the season. Uh, and speaking of patrons, our Hiram patron of the week here is Alan Raymond, a Hiram nineteen sixty six graduate. So uh, we got that done, and we have Cricket uh, Creek coming up here for an hour. I think we'll be a lot more. Autumn is an excellent time to enjoy the great outdoors. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we are open year-round seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit crookedriveradventures.com. Six and a half in Iowa State. The Americans are 73. Princeton Brown is 77. And you said Ohio State wins produce six and nothing. David Hart in Yale, 7 0. George and Van, 7 7. Arkansas and Alabama, 7 6. Alabama. Central Connecticut and the King is 20 3. Georgia Southern and James Madison. James Madison, who had a great notion of that. Supporting 5 0 record. CODBs, 7 16. State at Eastern Michigan. Should be a little lower in the next session. Like I said, 70 So, for you, and I think a lot of these, it did allow you to edit. You can make them just like what's like larger, smaller, by just like a regular version. And on your phone or whatever. Georgetown, San Diego, America, Europe, 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 Europe,
Michigan State of Rutgers, Michigan State at the 73, Lady McLeod. Syracuse Houston, Florida State, Florida State 7, Syracuse State nothing. Indiana and Michigan, uh, late in the first quarter, still 0 0. Winston Salem and Henshaw is number of those late starting game, no scores on those. Um, let's run down the starting lineups. Al, I will take the uh, Hiram Hawkins if you want to get the Battle of Bishop defense. The uh, Terriers are led by Jack Rosinski. The offense is averaging 13.7 points per game. It's a yard per game is 284. Rushing, they're averaging 96.8. And passing, 187.5. Starting in quarterback is number three, Sean DeHotto. 5'10", 165-pound sophomore. He hails from Steve. Number 22, Gabriel Hoskins. He's a 5'9", 175-pound junior running back. He is also from Texas. He is from Polarity, Texas. Uh, number 47, Anthony Brumba, 6'240 pound junior tight end, is from Perry High School in Nashville. Uh, the wide receiver is number 11, Ray Juan Tate, Mercer, 5275. He is from John McKay High School. At the same Number 81, Jarris Green, 6'1, 192 pound senior. I like using the camera. It's just a mobile 1080p. This is like number six, Tristan Bowie, and the 6283 pilot senior wide receiver is uh, in Hale St. John High School in Southington, Ohio. Yeah, that's why we use at left tackle. We have number 51, Brandon Flash, the 5 what 11, 275 pound junior. He is from Benedictine High School in Cleveland, number 55, Devin Farley, 6'2, 300 pounds, uh, freshman. He is out of University Prep in Rochester, New York. Number 75, Derek Hurst. He is 6'4, 310 pounds. He is a junior out of Minerva High School in Minerva, Ohio. Number 76, Andre Barnes. He is 6'2, 255 pounds. Sophomore. And at right tackle, we have number 79, Mills, 6'5, 315 pounds. Senior is out of Cuyahoga Falls High School in Akron, Ohio. The kicker punter is number 31, Chris Miller, 5'11", 165 pound senior. He is out of Stowe, Monroe High School in Ohio. And Al will give you the Battle of Bishops starting defense. We have number Outside get a chance to pick up these are games we're looking for. Okay, I'll give you a pen. You can just scribble down the scores and what do you want to look about it? I'll let you use my Sounds like a That's right. Yeah, he does it to me too. <laughs> 
averaging uh, getting up 49.2 points per game. Their defense of the yards per game is about 407. That would be 242.8 rushing yards and 244.1 passing yards. Uh, and defensive end, we've got number 15, the Brian Lake Central, 6'1", 160-pound junior. He is from McNicholas High School in Amelia, Ohio. And defensive tackle, Okay, so returning here to uh, we're going to run down the rest of the higher like starting defensive tackle number zero, Alfred Pedro, 6'2, 290 pound senior. He is out of Bingham School in American Samoa. Uh, at defensive end, number 90, Jalen Glass, 6 foot, 245 pound senior from Covina High School in California. An outside linebacker, number eight, Terry Allison, 6 foot, 225 pound senior. He is from Cathedral High School in LA, California. Number uh, outside linebacker number 23, Devin Merslet. He is 5'10, 170 pounds. He is a sophomore. He is out of St. John High School in Tangela, Uh Inside linebacker number 36, Dylan Balker, 5'10, 225 senior. He is from West Jaga High School in Chester. The other inside linebacker is number 40, Gavin Crusher. He is 5'10, 250 pounds, and he is a sophomore. He hails from Springville High School in Springville, Utah. At quarterback, number two, Ricardo Jimenez. He is 5'9, 150 pound junior from Denellen High School in Denellen, Florida. At the other corner, number 12, Tanvaste. Rebus, a 6195 pound junior. He is from Tailwood High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. At safety, number 16, in Malachi Nation, 5'10, 175 pound junior. He hails from Harden High School in Chula Vista, California. Number 11, Gregory Wilson Jr., 5'7, 180 senior. He is from Dunbar High School in Fort Myers, Florida. And I believe kickoff returners are returning Jimenez and number 27, Bryce Cargill, and Bryce Regal. And also a kick return is number 22, Andrew Hoskins. And now we'll take uh, a lesson there on offense. The Right. 
The wide receiver number four, John Bush, 6 2 Left tackle on the breaker, six two two freshman is all views. Left guard on the play speaker, six foot two hundred and forty pounds. That's the ball at the school at the freshman. Seven foot two hundred and six pounds. Seven on the double view on the high. White dog and Sunday, Jaden Watts, 162245 Captains for Hiram getting ready to go out for the toss are number 11, Ray Klein, Davis Hilfer, number 36, Dylan Balaker, number 79, Dominican Mills, number one, so, uh, senior from Willoughby, yes. and uh, 93, I do not have him on the roster, so I apologize for that. And, you know, this next I'm sorry. And uh, number 90, Jalen. So those are the five captains. Uh, the captain is for Ohio Wesleyan. We'll get those for you in a second and they go out for the season. Number 11, Jalen Harris. Number six. Is Mark Elvenry and number 24 is Joe. Those are the captains for Bell and Bishop. We get ready for the office. Beers that. Um... Okay. Wesley and the Blunt. They deferred to the second Iron. Put it out here. Byron will be receiving. And so Byron will be receiving. I'll be receiving here. South ends on. Yes, Byron is receiving the south ends on. And Wesley is kicking from the far side of the field. Uh, and just as we say that, the rain is starting to uh, come down a little bit harder here. And so we could have a. They can change the game here, Alex. Whether it doesn't allow. Okay, so Terry's will start out. We'll see. Uh, uh, we expect to see Sean to come out as the starting quarterback. And um, then, you know, like we had talked about during the pregame, I expect to see number 11, Ray Quan Davis, Herford, and number 81, wide receiver Jarius Green. Those are going to be the, the key players offensively, along with Sean Tejada. Is if uh, the Terriers are able to move the ball through the air, they're probably going to be the next to bring the recipients. So we will see what happens here. Iron uh, takes the field in their navy uniforms with white numbers and navy helmets. Red trim up there. Even on my lesson, was dressed in all white with black helmets. 
with orange and black trim. So I'm kicking off for Wesley is Sean Hook on the game too. Ethan Ship is a freshman, 5175 here comes the kick. Back knee for Hyman. And Bryce Oliver can get the ball out of the bounds. High on the second ball on the 35 yard line. Pretty good field position when the ball goes out of bounds. Is there a choice on that one? I believe it's automatic. That's the view that shows me. We took and took the ball. And I don't remember. Now, what if the ball didn't make it to the 35? Then you take it at the, uh, say it goes out to 40. So when I left 40, then you get it. Okay. Good. Al Matthews was the head coach at uh, Hockey College. Down there. Some milk for how many years are we on this? Five years. Five years. And as we talked about right off the bat, Sean Dehada is at the 24-yard line by none other than Markel Henry, as we talked about in the pregame. He's the one that's going to have to be uh, controlled. And now Henry, I believe, is a uh, Six He gets the ball out quickly the number 47. He's bumped on the He has a a very high school mass. And a nice little game gets a lot of that man. Still looking at about uh, 13 here for the Terriers. Uh, that was encouraging to start with the passing yeah. Nothing too on the Okay. Well, guys, are 13 nothing on Purdue trying to break that uh, road curse when they go up to West Lafayette. So, uh, in the gun, Smith to his left, three receivers to the left. Drops, he looks, and there is back shoulder thing. Tristan Mulligan, the 6'2", 183 pound senior out of Chocolate High School. A nice, uh, nice back. Don't have fade. Uh, good adjustment on the ball. And I noticed the bring in, we saw them throwing that back shoulder fade. So they saw something. Sometimes it leads them to believe that could be a. Uh, and they give the ball to Davis. Davis gets outside. Davis sort of bounces it, and he picks something about five yards. Now it looks like four yards is what they're going to get him. So it'll be second and six at the final uh, less than 40. But we, now we've not seen in our previous games Davis Kirkland winding the ball. We did see him on the reverse one time, but winding up in the back, it seemed crazy. Two by two set to hop it with uh, space to his right. He gets ready. Looks like a blitz coming by Wesleyan to hop it. Looks and throws. And Davis hurts for the back. He just couldn't handle it a little bit too high. It's going to bring out third and six for the area. What a drive was. It's pretty nice. Ireland has put together some, you know, and we talked about it in the beginning. It's Ireland going in his position past the game here a little bit to be able to uh, move the ball. So, uh, okay, 7 7 Michigan in Indiana. So, really, Michigan's first uh, real opponent, I guess. 
this year. So I know he's in trouble. He is in first. Henry again gets a hand down and pulls the hunter down, which is going to put Tyron in a funny situation for the nerd. That's a shame because that was a had some nice things in that drive. Maybe like get down there and put some points on the board. And you know, they're in the top of the 21-7. And I guess the, the positive that was a pretty competitive game with one of the better teams. You know, you look at the team, and Wittenberg is undefeated in the NCAC, and they're 4-1 overall. So, by Miller, which uh, rolls around, is going to be down by a higher bit about the 26-yard line. And that's what Ohio Wesleyan is going to take over. 20-yard punt for me. You know, sure, you know, you, you can't afford the, at least they were on Ohio Wesleyan's side of the field, so it doesn't hurt him as much. But, you know, you'd like to pin him down inside the red zone. Okay, so. Wesleyan comes out, looks like they're going to be in a two by two. They're going empty, and Cade moves up as the quarterback. And uh, so he looks at over, motion by number two, and it's a jet sweep to the left. And number two is Jackley Alston, 5'11, 180. Senior from Pickerington, Vincent, uh, about eight yards from the end sweep. Let's see another one. Jackie, I think I'm sorry about that. Jackie, can take us a while to get some of those names. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got uh, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Who's going to give the ball to? Three receivers to the right, two to the left, empty for Buiza. He's looking around to see what he's got. It's about third and five. He's a drop. He looks and hits the puck. Malachi. Nation. It's over. Knocks the ball away. Nice play. Nation. I see he's going to be forcing the puck out here from their, from their own 30 yard line. It was. That's what, yeah. Stepped up there. I see here. Jimenez. And catches it. And the 23 yard line. 22 is where I'll push him on. And that's where I'm going to say, I'm going Dude, uh, but you know, as you're saying now, that was a you know, a couple of back big plays by the higher defense. Now, if they can pick up here where they left off the pocket so they can start putting some stuff together, they, uh, they might have a chance here to put some points on the board. Power formation for right to the center to get it to two, and that is uh, about leaving that to be possible. I think it's about three yards, and so they're going to get the ball here, and then it's going to make it uh, second and seven. So it's a high, and that's the signals. Looks like he needs clarification on the call. There's been a change to how it comes up past the line. Blocking assignment. Two receivers to left. The how to gives the ball to Hoskins. Hoskins slashes off the right side. 
Okay, and Booza, who was able to get the distributed the ball out. Incomplete. And they're saying incomplete. And uh, boy, nice, nice throw by Booza, but uh, ran out of room. That was number six, uh, Cooper Haley, the junior wide receiver from Orville, Ohio. <coughs> so it's going to be punting time. And uh, again, a nice defensive stand by the Terriers. And Hiram is uh, it's come to play on defense today. Okay, so uh, punt formation, and we've got uh, punting for, uh, I guess this would be, uh, is this Ethan Ship again? We'll see here in a second. Nine. Number nine, okay, so we're going to get a number on this. Broussard Nash. Broussard Nash, and uh, so Hiram's going to take over the ball here. Appears about the, uh, looks like right at the 20-yard line. So, Terriers get ready for their third possession, Al, and we've got um, 6.50 to go in the first period. 0-0 between Ohio Wesleyan and Hiram from Charles A. Henry Field in Hiram, Ohio on a dreary uh, football <laughs> type of Saturday here. And so, uh, we've got two receivers to the right. Tejada in, in the gun, 
and he drops and he looks and dumps it off to number 14 for about a five yard gain and that would be uh, Isaac Cervantes, a five, 575 pound freshman running back out of San Diego, California. A lot of California kids on the Hiram There's, roster. Yeah. Huh? Okay, two by two set. Tejada moves um, Cervantes over to the left and give the Cervantes again, and he cuts back and picks up another three or four yards. So we're looking at third and two, Al. Wow, a completely different offensive philosophy at this point from what we saw in that first, first series. Yes. And we got some scores here. We've got Princeton 14, Brown 7, Sacred Heart and Yale 14 nothing Yale. And then we will get back to these here in a second as we get to uh, Okay, 2 by 2 set for Tejada. And it looks like he's got uh, Hoskins back in the backfield with him. And he drops and gets it off. No, it's Cervantes again. And Cervantes picks up about seven yards. He's out to the 35-yard line for Flag a Hiram down. first down. Flag down. I think it's going to be a <clears throat> And it looks like it could be holding on Terriers. On 11. Number 11. So that would be uh, Raekwon Davis Herford. And, well, wow, what a – what an inopportune time for that, Al. I mean, yeah, that would have been uh, really a huge momentum changer for Hiram. And instead of a first down, now they're looking at third and 12. That's not going to be good in film study. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> for somebody, it's not going to be good. Gonna be good. <laughs> I remember in high school, the coach used to run it back and forth every, you know, about 15 times. <laughs> so you knew. <laughs> So we got three receivers to the left, Tejada in the gun. He drops, he looks, he's rolling, and he's – oh, he gets out. Well, now yeah. not quite. Number 29 for Ohio Wesleyan. And we will get a – Briar – Briar Ramey. Briar – Briar Ramey, the middle linebacker, 5'10", 210-pound junior out of Mapleton High School in Ohio. And so uh, Hiram will be forced to punt from about their own, it looks like, 11-yard line. So Ohio Wesleyan stands to get some pretty good field position here. And Miller is back to punt, and he gets off a, a pretty good kick down to the 50-yard line. Flag down. <coughs> and number two uh, for Ohio Wesleyan is able to return it to the 40, and that would be um, Tyler Webb. If it's a personal the, foul, yeah. Oh, so First Hiram time. is the benefit, gets the benefit of a roughing the kicker call and will retain possession yes, here. Yeah. So, so a penalty took that first down away from him and a penalty gives him a first Both, down. Yeah, yeah. So now uh, the Terriers are in, in uh, still, still in their own territory, but they will be up at about the 25-yard line. So, on the net of that, they lost about five yards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but they still have the ball. So, first and 10 from the 26-yard line. And Hiram has two receivers to the right. and Well, they got two to the, to the right and two to the left and tight formation. And they're going to uh, – Tejada keeps the ball on a quarterback sweep. <laughs> And he is uh, closed down very quickly by the uh, number 21, uh, Tyler Neal, the 5'9", 160-pound senior corner, just came up and uh, said, yeah, he... said, no, no, no on that one. Not today. So uh, did the uh, Dakeem Matumbo, no, 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 <laughs> you're not going there. <laughs> so second and 12 here. Tight formation, tight trips for Hiram to the right, single receiver to the left. Tejada switches. Broomba. Uh, Broomba over. And Broomba is the tight end, so I believe he's in the backfield for some, mm. some blocking. And that is number six for Hiram. Is that, uh, and that is um, yeah. Tristan Mullahan. 
Mullahan, uh, this is going to give Hiram third and two from about the 34-yard line. But, uh, you know, they're in makeable situations, Al. And this yeah. is, you know, you can keep the chains moving when you're in these situations. So. Back shoulder fade to Mullahan, I'm just calling it. Okay. <laughs> we, you heard it from Al first here. Okay. So we got a power eye formation. Well, Give to Raekwon Davis Herford. And he is, boy, it's close. Um, About a I think they're going to mark him a, a little short. bit short. Yeah. It looks like a, a just short of the 36-yard line, which is going to put Hiram in punting situation again as Chris Miller comes out. Uh, was this his uh, third punt or fourth punt already? Yeah, this is yeah third or fourth. And with 227 to go in the first period, we still have a 0-0 ball game. Uh, back deep for uh, is uh, Jaki Fake. Oh, a fake, and they get the first okay. down. So Miller keeps it, runs off the right side on the fake, and is able to pick up enough to get the first down. I, for I almost said something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of in a mood for a fake here. Well, and you know, when you're 0-6, you're you get to that point where you're a little bit more open about you need to change, change some things yeah. up. So, so Hiram, uh, first down from the 37-yard line. And uh, Sean Tejada is back out there again. So we'll see what Hiram dials up. Uh, some some trickeration. They've used a number of different people in the backfield today yeah. and uh, really keeping things lively out there. Two receivers to each side. Tejada with Brumbaugh in the backfield. Tejada steps up, gets it to Brumbaugh, and Brumbaugh is rumbling, and he's up to about the 45-yard line and a pickup of eight for the Terriers. And he's just been simple – Flare passes to the back to out of the back. Yeah. So uh, Hiram's quick to get up to the ball right away here. Pick up a little tempo offense. I like those old school uh, big fullback, big running back. Yeah. Two receivers each side and give to, oh. well, Brumba gets the ball again, but this time not as fortunate as he picks, uh, loses about two yards on that. So it's going to be third and six, and it looks like Brumbaugh is uh, down on the field right now. Hopefully nothing serious. Well, he's moving, moving both legs. There's good signs there. Yeah, so. he took a, took a good shot right after he got the ball. Right. So 50 seconds to go in the first period. We've got an injury timeout. So let's go to a uh, Crooked River commercial if we can. Autumn is an excellent time to enjoy the great outdoors. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we are open year-round seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit crookedriveradventures.com. We good? Okay, so we're back from the break there. And Hiram is facing a third and three situation. Uh, Tejada, two receivers on each side. And he sends them. Uh, Saki. Oh, that would be pass interference. As number nine for Ohio Wesleyan was... Uh, he was hanging on to Hiram receiver there. Yeah, you guys, uh, Saki, they replaced Broomball with from from uh, Ghana. And that is uh, Jake Smothers, number nine, was uh, the high, or the uh, Ohio Wesleyan defensive back that was hanging on to uh, number 81 for the Terriers, which is Jarris Green. So, two by two set. Hiram's got another first down, and they are in Ohio Wesleyan territory for the second time in uh, the first quarter here. 26 seconds to go. First down, the chains are moved, and two by two set. He moves up. Uh, right he left. moves uh, Sack, Sacky to. Oh, and Sacky. Wow, nice little run. So, a nice run. 
by oh. Edgar Kaysen Sackey. Nine-yard gain. And a nine-yard gain down to about the 35-yard uh, line. And we'll be looking at second and one. So uh, a lot of different people coming into the backfield. Oh, the end of the quarter, yes. And so at the end of the first quarter, we have Ohio Wesleyan zero and Hiram zero. And a uh, uh, nice game, Al. Yes. I mean, pretty spirited. Both teams have had a little bit of uh, offense. but And I think the weather could be slowing them down here. You know, as far as throwing the ball, we're probably not going to see a lot of that. Yeah. <coughs> it's, uh, it's Ohio. you got to have a running game here. Yeah, you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. Because if you don't, you're going you know, to be stuck in the same yard line most of the, most of the time. So uh, coaches rally their troops together, and they're going to get things going. So Hiram is going to take over here in a second with uh, – with the ball, it appears on the uh, about the 41 yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, the Wesleyan defense is out of their huddle and they're back onto the field. And here comes the Terriers as they break uh, huddle with Coach Rosinski and they get ready to uh, run their second and one, yeah, second and one uh, situation here. And Hiram uh, still has Quazon Saki in the backfield with Tejada. He moves Saki over to the left, and he looks, and he gets the ball out quickly to Jarris Green for a pickup and another Hiram first down at the 35-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. Definitely on a roll here. Yeah. So they've got a little rhythm going here. And uh, so Hiram is ready to come up to the line. They are at the 26-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. Two-by-two two set. Case and Sackey in the backfield to the left to Tejada. And as we've seen recently, they've been switching sides. And he, as he does, he puts Case and Sackey over and gives him the ball. And Case and Sackey hits it hard right in the middle and picks up about a yard up to the 25-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan, where it'll be second and nine. And, um, okay, and so in West Lafayette, it is Ohio State 20 and Purdue zero going uh, there into the second quarter. Actually about, what, 3.31 to go in the second quarter. Yep. So they're almost through there, almost halftime there in West Lafayette. Um, so now we've got uh, – Tejada drops, he looks, he gets a fade out to number six, Mullahan. And Smothers was right there to take it away. But, um, boy, for a minute there, Al, I thought your uh, back, back shoulder fade was coming back here. <laughs> okay, so third and long from the uh, – third and long from the 25-yard line. And it is now Michigan 14, Indiana 7 – with uh, 324 to go in the second period. So a little bit of a surprise there, Al, with yeah. uh, Michigan struggling, although everybody has been saying they haven't really been tested at this point. So, okay, so we've got Hiram with, with a two-by-two two set. Uh, Case and Sackey to the left to Tejada. Tejada drops. He looks. He steps up into the pocket. He gets out. He curls back around, throws back all the way across the field. To number nine, Townsend, and Townsend is down inside the 10-yard line, and Hiram is now in the red zone, Al. Yeah, they're definitely moving the ball. <laughs> uh, boy, Tejada was, uh, he had rolled to his left, and then he, he reversed field, came back to his right, and Townsend had shake, shaken open down the right sideline, and he found him for a, a big gain for the uh, Terriers of about 14 yards. So Case and Sackey to the left. Uh, and he motions off there to the oh, left, oh. and now I think that's an incomplete pass there. But uh, they had trips to the left, and they motioned Saki to the left and uh, tried to throw a little screen to him there, and it just uh, yeah. got blown up pretty quickly. And he took a shot in the knee. Yeah, so second down and 
10 from the 10 yard line. Second down and goal from the 10 yard line. And uh, Case and Sackey is uh, limping off the field a little bit. So let's see who they put in at the running back here. And it, it appears that uh, Townsend is going to line up. Uh, now they're going to go, I think they're going to go empty here, it looks like. And they are. So you got three receivers to the left and uh, two to the right. And uh, Tejada. And there's give the ball to Green. And Green gets a little shovel pass and gets it down to about <laughs> haphazardly. Wow. Uh, Kind of bounced off his shoulder pads and he regained <laughs> control of it. But he's got down to about the uh, six yard line here where Hiram's looking at third and goal from the six. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. That thing bounced all yeah. over, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a nice thing about that, which a lot of people don't know, is that would have been an incomplete pass had he dropped right. it. So, uh, but um, we got three to the left, one to the right. And Towns and motions out to the left. And yes, touchdown, oh, touchdown. Terriers! Jarris Green on the slant from Sean Tejada. And that is their first touchdown pass of the year. Wow. So congratulations to the Terriers for breaking that uh breaking that uh six week drought. That six week <laughs> drought. And I was gonna say that the, not the kind of streak you wanna have. No. So but Miller is out for the extra point, and we've got a 6 nothing ball game with 12.25 to go in the second period. And so extra point up and coming. Miller's kick is good. And so it's 7 nothing Hiram Terriers. And Ohio Wesleyan looks stunned over there. They yeah. look completely lifeless right now, Al. Crowd's coming live. Yeah, yeah. And um, – you know, we had mentioned the one thing about uh, Wesleyan was the youth, how young they were up front on offense. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at their defense. They've got a, on the defensive line, they've got a junior and a freshman, uh, sophomore linebacker, junior linebacker, um, junior linebacker, sophomore. So they're pretty young on both sides right. of the football yeah. here. Which is good for the future, but sometimes that youth rears up and bites you in the butt when you get in pressure situations like that. Well, when you play a team that has a one, you kind of take it easy. Yes, yes. That might be what's going on. Is it took their eye off the took their eye off the goal, and uh, sometimes that's easy to do when you look at somebody and you don't see them as much of a threat. So, uh, okay, Wesleyan is ready for the, the kickoff. And I noticed they came out with a little bit more pep in their step when yeah. they got on the field. So, uh, Hiram is getting ready to kick. And so, back deep for Wesleyan. Uh, looks like it's going to be uh, Jaki Alston and I think Tyler Webb would be the two deep men, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so... Miller are getting ready to kick off for the Terriers. So, again, 12.25 to go in the first half. And uh, uh, interesting ball game. Interesting ball game. So, uh, we've, uh, we've been waiting for this out of Hiram here for a couple games, and they've uh, woken up today. So, Miller is getting ready. And uh, – so we will hopefully get some scores here, Division Three scores, and uh, see what's going on in the rest of the Ohio Division Three world. Kickoff travels down to about the eight-yard line where Jaki Alston gets it and is able to get it out to the 29-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan, and that's where the battling bishops will start. And so uh, we'll see if that – now – uh, Booza has been the starting quarterback most of the way here for um, for Ohio Wesleyan, and it appears that it is no, it might be Austin Miller might be in now. I can't see. Is it is it five or five. fifth? Looks like five. So motion to uh, Jaquie Alston. Alston. 
gets it and is able to pick up almost 10 yards on a little flare pass. <coughs> so we will see here and okay. And so we've got um, got some scores here. We'll see what we come up with for everybody as far as local scores. It appears uh, nothing yet. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Booza gets it out to number four, Josh Hurt, the 6'2 sophomore from Granville, Ohio. And that picks up a first down for the battling Bishops as they move the ball out to appears to be about the 44-yard line where they'll get a new set of downs. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. <coughs> Booza in the backfield with number 25. And uh, Booza drops a little quick pitch to, now actually that's number 23 for the Bishops. And he is able to pick up four yards and that is number, uh, that's Marquise Henry, the 5'10", 250. 15 pound senior from Dayton Chaminade Julian High School. So, second and five for the Bishops. And uh, they're, they're starting to move a little bit here, Al. Two by two set. And it looks like it'd be a fake jet sweep. And Booza goes deep to number three. And that's. Uh, that is Tyler Webb, and he is the leading receiver for the Bishops. Uh, Webb has 27 catches this year for a 16.4 yard average, and he also has six touchdown receptions. So he is their big play receiver. So it is first and 10 from, uh, appears to be the 36 yard line of Hiram. And <coughs> so, Booza gets ready to receive the ball. Two receivers to his left, one to the right. And he gives the ball to nice. Henry again. And Henry went nowhere. Looks like he lost about a half yard. Of yeah, and that would be at the bottom of that pile is number zero, which is um, Alfred P Pedro for the Terriers. Pedro's played a nice game. He's been on the bottom of a lot of plays. A lot of plays, yes, he has. And that's what you what you want out of your nose guard, Al, is someone that's going to just plug that up in there in those those two A gaps, and and he did just that. So, two receivers to each side for Booza, and in the backfield with Henry, he drops, he looks, he gets the ball out quickly to number four, who is oh, jo Josh Hurst, and Hurst gives the ball up as he's hit. And we'll get a number on that, and I think that's number 19 that delivered the hit, which is Kevin Kevin Dix, six foot, 180 pound freshman. And let's we'll see where Dix is from. Uh, Dix is from Firestone High School in Akron. And Balaker was the one that re recovered the fumble. <laughs> so nice job by the Terriers as they repel the uh, the Bishops. Offensive efforts there, and Hiram takes over at the 27-yard uh, line. That was a nice gift. It rolled right to him. Yeah. You need those once in a while, Al. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. Things, things got to go your way sometime. And so uh, Hiram comes out, three receivers to the left. And, uh, okay, they, they needed a running back. And... Sir Cervantes is back on the field and uh, Tejada looks and he's just going to toss it out of bounds there in the direction of number 14, Isaac Cervantes. Um, but there was nothing there. Bre things were breaking down quick. Yeah, they were. They had, him, they had him boxed in. Right. And this is kind of where, you know, if you're Hiram, if you could get that running game going again a little bit with a 7 nothing lead, you know, just shorten the game here a little bit. Make the clock your friend. Yeah, make the clock your friend for sure. So, three receivers to the left, one to the right. And play action fake. 
And Tejada is in trouble. And it oh. looks like it's going to be the... He fumbled. Nope, they're calling him down. And it looks like it's going to be the other defensive end. Um, that is Tyler Yanks, number 87, the six foot, 210 pound junior out of Olentangy Orange. A huge loss there for the Terriers as the ball goes all the way back to, it looks like the 14 yard line. And it's going to be third and half a mile here for, <laughs> the, for, for the Terriers. And uh, so I got two receivers to the left and two to the right. And now you just don't want to make a mistake here. You don't want to inadvertently. You know, they're, they're running stack receivers on both sides here. And let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, a little screen pass to Cervantes, and uh, he just couldn't handle it. So Hiram's forced to punt. But with eight minutes to go in the second period, it is still the Hiram Terriers seven. And the Ohio Wesleyan battling Bishops, zero. So, um, okay, Miller getting ready to punt here. And uh, so they've dropped. And uh, let's see, Gunners right and left there, personal protector in place. Miller gets a snap. He gets it off. Woo! It's nearly nice. blocked. And it, But he's going to get legs on this kick. And, boy, it's rolling, rolling, rolling all the way down to the 41-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. So what looked like it could have been a disaster there wow. turned out to be a pretty good thing for Hiram. He's got a nice roll on that. He, he sure did. And uh, that ends up being a 43-yard punt. So uh, Hiram is <clears throat> poised to come out play some defense again, Al. I mean, they've, uh, they've done what they needed to do. And uh, so Wesleyan comes out, two receivers to each side. Booza is in the backfield there. And uh, looks like they brought back um, Devon Haley. And, you know, I think that ball skipped. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a little quick out by Booza to number four, Josh Hurst, and a little bit short. So. <clears throat> second and 10 from the Ohio Wesleyan 41. And it just looks like he had up too much on his front foot when he threw that sure one. Did. And that right. ball just no. Okay. Two receivers to the right, one to the left here. Uh, Henry, is, or Haley, I'm sorry, is in the backfield with Booza. And Booza drops, gives it to Haley, or Hale rather, and Hale is oh. over to 45. Over to 40, down to the 38-yard line of Hiram. And that was Devon, uh, Devon Haley. And uh, Haley was able to pick up, let's see, nine, about 21-yard gain for Haley. And it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a pace here by Ohio Wesleyan as they're going to go quick, try to get things going. Two receivers to the left here. And... Haley in the backfield with Booza. And Booza, a little quick pitch to Haley. And Haley is back, slams down to about the 33 yard line where it is going to be uh, second and probably six here. So uh, a nice little run as our, uh, our makeshift window uh, supports there. <laughs> the lifespan of that cardboard's not too long there, guys. So uh, let's see what we uh, what we get. Okay, so we're back to the ball game here. We've got uh, two receivers to each side. Booza with Haley in the backfield. Pe play action fake to Haley. Going deep to number oh. three, which is Tyler Webb. And oh, I, that was a, a pretty good pass. Webb should have had that one. So that's going to bring up third and uh, six here for the battling bishops. Um, so Wesley and gets ready for uh, third and six. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Uh, Haley in the backfield with Booza. And uh, let's see uh, here. 
Okay, third and six, as we said. And pressure by the Hiram, and they get the ball off to number two, the wide receiver. Well, I'm sorry, that's number four. I think it's Hurst. And it is. It's Josh Hurst um, down to about the 20. So a pickup of 14 yards there on uh, third and six. <clears throat> so now we're looking at first and 10 from about the 20 yard line of Hiram. And um, it's time for the Hiram defense to step up here. Two receivers to each side. Booza with Henry off, or Haley off to his right. Deep motion by number two, and he throws a little screen out to number two, which is uh, Jaki Alston, and Alston is able to uh, maybe pick up about four yards there, it looks like. So it's going to be second and, second and six from the 16-yard <clears throat> line. And it uh, appears that we're having mechanical troubles with our window here. So, uh, with 5.26 to go here in the first half, uh, Ohio Wesleyan down on the Hiram 16, and they give it to Haley, and Haley is getting chased down. Uh, Balaker was chasing him from behind, and let's see who eventually got him there. Looks like, uh, I think it's number 40 for Hiram. Gavin Cruiser was able to catch him. Uh, not after he was able to pick up a couple, but it is third and two, it looks like. And um, so two receivers, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Backfield with Booza. And they're ready for the snow. Oh, and that's going to be a free play. And it's Webb, Tyler Webb with an easy touchdown. Uh, Hiram kind of froze after that offsides penalty, and uh, Booza took took advantage of that as uh, Webb ran pretty free into the end zone for a touchdown. So that makes it uh, seven to six in favor of Hiram with the extra point up and coming. And uh, now, okay, Sean Put or Putt is on the field now, and we thought Sean would be the kicker here earlier. And uh, Sean is freshman from Mansfield Senior. And the kick is good, so it is 7-7 seven to seven with 4.30 to go in the first half. And, Al, it's been a, a competitive first half. Uh, that woke up Ohio Wesley, and now Hiram needs the answer. Yeah, they definitely have to come back and – Probably open that uh, offense up a little bit. I used to hate it when I coached when people would say turn the page, but you may have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may have to turn the page, a couple more pages. Well, I think here, too, what you, you don't want to do if you're Hiram is you don't want to go three and out deep in your own territory. Right. Uh, you want to, if nothing else, eat some clock up and move the ball. And if you do have to give the ball up, make Ohio Wesleyan have to, to – traverse a long field rather than you know right have a 30 or 40 yard drive to get points so um wesleyan is getting ready to kick off and it looks like that is um ethan ships is getting ready to kick for ohio wesleyan okay so ships ready the officials are ready hiram's ready there's the kick it's going to travel down to about the uh, fair catch. about the nine yard line. I don't know about that, Al. I'm not sure. I'm a fan of that, but and that was number two, Ricardo Jimenez, who uh, fair caught it. Um, I guess they just figured they can't get it past the 25, so they just take the fair catch and get it out there. But it seems to me that. Man, some of those you could take a chance and you'd be out, out over the 30-yard line. Yeah. Those. But that's the kind of the rules that they're trying to change to diminish the effects of kickoff returns in the game. Okay, two receivers to the left for Hiram. They're at the 25-yard line. And uh, looks like uh, Gabe Hoskins was in the pistol formation and picked up maybe two yards. So we're going to be looking at second A. The, Maybe got out to the 27 yard or 20, yeah, 27 yard line. So, uh, 
this is where you, you, you got to be deliberate, but you can't be too deliberate right now. So right. uh, we've got uh, a score here in West Lafayette. It is Ohio State 20 and Purdue nothing. Okay. And uh, so Tejada in the backfield, two receivers to the left, one to the right. He rolls to his left, and he gets it out to – Raekwon Davis Herford, uh, good for it looks like about a six yard pickup, and it's going to be third and two. And uh, okay, and then in Ann Arbor is now Michigan 21 and Indiana seven. So Wolverines were getting a little push there for the first time this year, okay. Uh, we got a power pistol formation, two receivers to the right. Tejada gives the ball to Hoskins. Hoskins is, looks like he's just short. Uh, looks like he's about a foot short of the first down, so it's going to be fourth and short. And, you know, here, Al, with under three minutes, I think you got a punt. I, I know that, that the temptation goes through coaches' minds there when they think, well, maybe we could get this and keep this drive alive, but I think they'd be better off just getting it out there. And and Hiram's defense has been playing diamonds here in the first half, so I'd put the I'd be confident put the ball back in uh, the defense's hands. Uh, Miller gets off another pretty decent punt. It hits at uh, about the 33-yard line and takes another row. Oh, it thought the ball was free, but no. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan at the eight-yard line was able to cover it. And so uh, <coughs> sure what Miller has been able to get some, some great rolls on some of these kicks. And that one just got by uh, uh, number two, uh, Jaki Alston, and was able to roll down to the eight-yard line. Now, Hiram couldn't have asked for a better situation here. Um, with 2.20 to go in the first half, a very long field for the battling bishops. So two receivers to the left, two to the right for Booza. <coughs> and Pierce Haley's in the backfield with him. And Booza takes a drop. He's getting pressured. He rolls to his right. And he may have been over the line of scrim. Whoa. Well, I, that, was, that, was that was close. That was real close. He looked like he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. But, yeah, I think they are going to call that. So, big play for Hiram there. And that would be a, a loss of down, too, Al, I believe, on uh, an illegal forward pass. Yep. Yeah. So, 2.12 to go, and they're going to go about half the way back to the goal line here. So, I think we're going to be at uh, – at about the three-yard line, and Ohio Wesleyan's going the wrong direction right now. I'll move the chains. No, <clears throat> no, no, yeah. no. Was on the eight-yard line, so they yeah. should be able to. <laughs> uh, you love when that happens. Yeah. So uh, the, the chain gang was uh, a little confused yeah. there as they were moving backwards when they shouldn't have been. So uh, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Booza with Haley in the backfield uh, with his standing on the – his heels on the end line. And number six – oh, Jimenez comes up and smacks him at the five-yard line. A nice play there. That was number six, and we'll get a number on that. Um, the receiver was Cooper Haley from Orville, Ohio, for uh, for Ohio Wesley, and a pickup, a short pickup there of a couple yards. So we're looking at uh, third and twelve. Two receivers on each side, Booza. With Haley in the backfield, taking his time. He drops. He looks. And oh, blitz. Safety, safety for the Terriers. Man, yes. And that was number 40. Can we get the ball? 
And and Hiram may be able to maybe parlay this into some points. That was number 40, Gavin Cruiser, who came flying through the gap. And Cruiser gets credit for the safety on um, – on Caden Booza. And sack and a safety. The sack and a safety. Wow, that's uh, that's a good day there. That's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Terriers are now up nine to seven with a chance to get some really decent field position here. Now, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to talk with my return person. I'm saying, you know, when that ball comes down, we're not fair cash doing this unless yeah. you, you've got 12 people around you and then you're going to run this back. Oh, yeah. Because you need to get some better field position, and it looks like uh, looks like Townsend might be going back with. Uh, no, nah, I take that back. There he is, Jimenez. Jimenez and uh, Kriegel, who's the normal return people for for Hiram on their kickoff return, and it appears they're going to kick it off a tee, which you know I guess the disadvantage on safety is. is the reason most people punt it is you have better coverage time on that type of thing yeah. instead of a low driving kick. So we'll see what happens here. And good, good. There we go. And Jimenez, Jimenez back up over up to the 47-yard line of uh, Hiram and the Terriers with 120 to go here in the first half have a great chance to pick up some more points here, Al. All right, that back shoulder fade. Back shoulder <laughs> fade to Mullahan. We saw it in the first half. We saw it one time uh, earlier in this quarter. He's a weapon. I just like that kid. I yeah. just think he's a weapon. I, and he, so he went out there. Yeah. two by two set. It looks like uh, Kaysen Saki is in the backfield with Tejada, and he gives it to Saki, and not yeah. much there as he may be wedged out a yard, if that. So it's going to be second and ten. And um, and it, did, uh, it looks like Wesley, you know, it was Hiram or, yeah, it was Hiram timeout yeah. there. And so the Terriers have uh, two more timeouts. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 so, so, Al, in that situation here, would you have taken that timeout? Well, I probably never would have called the draw or uh, inside <laughs> run, but uh, I, I unless I had something coming up uh, like hook and ladder. Yeah, something. I'm not. I'm a fan of trick plays when it's not against me. Right. I don't like running them. Right, but, right, right. <laughs> myself, but I uh, um, always had one built-in trick play. It seemed like. Uh, now, I, what what would Rock Farlow do right here? Oh, they were uh, double handoff. Double handoff. Wing T double handoff. Okay. <laughs> so, we got two by two set. And right Tejada down. gets the ball out to Davis Herford. And that is first a down. first down for the Terriers at the 42-yard line of Ohio Wesley. And the clock is stopped at 107. And Hiram has got something going here. A few, mo few more like that. That was the hook. We just need to ladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Two by two set. One minute to go in the first half. Tejada takes a drop. He looks. He gets it out to. Oh. oh that would, well, that wasn't the back shoulder that fade back to Mullahan on that one. <laughs> Ball was intended for Tristan Mullahan. It was a, a little bit too far to the uh, sideline on that one. So, we've got um, – uh, 53 seconds ago, second and 10. And it was, you know, that was, that's a good uh, philosophy there is, you know, once you pick up a first down to take a shot at the end zone there and then yeah. to loosen up the defense a little bit. Okay, two by two set. And there's Tejada drops. He looks. He's getting ah, some pressure. He gets out of it. Run. And he's up to the 40, 35, 30. Out at the 35-yard line, and wow, that was real close to maybe a – could have been a late hit at that. Yeah. But um, at the 35-yard line, Tejada stops the clock with 43 seconds to go, and Hiram is uh, getting close to field goal range here, Al. And I'm we talked it. about maybe to get some – pick up a few more points. So Tejada – Two receivers each side. He's got uh, 
Hoskins in the backfield with him. He drops. He looks. And, oh, oh and it was intended for Davis Herford, but uh, really pretty dangerous throw right in that situation to the middle of the field. My guy was wide open, too, six. <laughs> I don't Mul- want to say anything. Mulhead but... was open again. <laughs> so 39 seconds to go here. Uh, Terriers are ahead nine to seven. And Hiram has a second and 10 from the 35-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. And, um, okay, three receivers to the right, one to the left. And here is uh, Tejada with Hoskins in the backfield. Gives it to Hoskins. Hoskins is able to pick up about two. Maybe they're maybe only going to give him one on that. So it's going to be third and nine from the 24-yard line. And Hiram takes their second time out here. And uh, 34 seconds to go in the half. And I, I, I think they've got to get, I mean, in my opinion now, I think they're going to have to get inside the 20 to have a decent chance yeah. at, at some points here. So they're going to have to dial up that five or six yard, uh, you know, hook play or, you know, something, a controlled pass where they can get the ball down and into better position for their field goal kicker. I was thinking of uh, we had uh, Gary Quizino I coached under as well, and Quiz's thing was uh, oh, what did we call that? Red thirty nine, and that was a, a quick pitch to the receiver, and then the receiver th- uh-huh. would throw it back to the quarterback. Okay, but it was part of our offensive plays, but it worked. I don't know how it worked because every week every team knew what was coming. <laughs> Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Tejada, play action fake. Run. And he dropped. He pulls it up. He's up over the – got the first down, mm-hmm. Al. He got over to 15, down to wow. about the 14. They're going to give him just – yeah, he's calling the first down. He's waiting. Yeah, the ball – I mean, his knees did not touch. So, that's going to be a first down for Hiram. 20 – when time is running here, oh, and man, they're going to have to ground the ball here. I guess not. And they get the ball out quickly to Townsend. Oh, and now they're going to have to take time out. <clears throat> should have dropped it. I would have uh, dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I, I might have grounded the ball on first yeah. down there. So you have some time to talk about what you want to do. Um, throwing across the field like that's always a dangerous thing like yeah. that, you know. But um, they might. Uh, you know, barring a sack. Well, they really don't have a lot. I mean, they're they're out of timeouts. So, yeah, you're, you're going to have to throw to the end zone on this and then see what happens because if you don't, uh, you can't afford to come up on the one-yard line with that. You, know, you don't have enough time to get up to the line and down it. Yeah. So um, I would suspect we're going to see a uh, maybe one play to the end zone and uh, – and then a field goal attempt. But they're definitely in Miller's field goal range at this point. So you but you just you can't go short of the end zone, unfortunately, on this. No. So we got uh two receivers each side. Tejada moves Hoskins over to the right. There's the snap. Tejada rolls out to his left. A we hold. got a hold on Hiram. And that's probably going to do it there, guys. I mean, we get one more play, but uh, that probably eliminates the field goal attempt yeah. there. So, so it'll be, uh, 10 yards. Uh, yeah, 40 yards. So, 57 for Hiram. And that was um, – well, they're going to kick, kick it. Well, we'll see. I mean, you might as well if you can. I mean, if he showed that you can try, yeah. Okay. So, and this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt. And uh, I think I have somewhere here what Miller's longest of the year is. Uh, his long is 25 yards. So, this is a little bit longer than his yeah. his best attempt. 
but but his extra points are pretty solid so you know this is definitely a doable kick definitely be a boost. yeah it's up and it's good yeah wow wow nice a 40 yard field goal by chris miller with no time left in the first half and Hiram takes a 12-7 lead. So. Okay. Okay. Can I, uh, you want me to get some ads in before we go? Okay. So uh, we're going to be off the air for a few minutes here. We're, um, we're changing streams. So be patient with us. We are not leaving you guys. We will be back. Um, Again, with 20 minutes here on a halftime clock, Hiram has the lead 12 to 7. And uh, for, specifically for each, so like Domino would come to him and say, This is our recipe. Can you do it? And he'd say, Yeah. And so because he did all the Domino, it was Domino East of Chicago. Uh, he did Chet, Nats, Nancy Dusky, yeah. Cameo Pizza, a couple other places, whatever the big places were in the range. But anyway, he, he was a real good guy, and uh, he took over. Nobody wanted the uh, middle school coordinator position at Keystone. Uh -huh. So he's like, well, I'll take it. You don't have to pay me, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. And so he did it, and he wanted to do seven on sevens. Cause I did middle school seven on seven. And, uh, me and a guy out of uh, Osiris, who's now at uh, Colonel Crawford, where he's from. But he was, he was super, for two years, he was a superintendent, the principal, and the damn football coach. <laughs> I said, I've never heard of that before. Yeah. And nobody would take it down there at uh, uh, yeah. Colonel, Colonel Crawford. But at the time of this, he was at New Cyrus. Uh, and uh, but anyway, he, I told him, well, let's come on, we'll do seven on seven, you know. And he called me and said, the school will won't pay for a bus or anything. Really? I said, not that you know. No, no cooperation. So I said, well, I said, that's all right, man. Don't worry about it. We'll work it out someday. It'll happen. He called me back the next day and he goes, did I ever tell you what I did for a living? And I said, no. Well, you better be self-made. He goes, you'll be a prick. I said, I said, oh. I said, don't get fired. You just got this job. He goes, I have volunteer. Who's going to fire a millionaire volunteer? Right, right. So I said, what are you going to do? He goes, I already did it. And he said, I'm just letting you know when I did it. I said, oh, God, I don't need you to confess. Did he buy a bus or something? He rented a damn bus. Did he? Rented a bus. He bought this, uh, you know how they have the water thing? You yeah. Pump it with air and it shoots water out. Yeah. It's like a hydration system. Yeah. Bought two of them. So they, uh, I said, well, because the first two seven-on-sevens for middle school were in New Cyrus. He paid everything, and the kids enjoyed it. They had a good time. He had a good, good bunch of kids there. And uh, I tell you, who was sad. Uh, poor sports was doubling. They show up in this charter bus, followed by all the parents and their Lexus and stuff. Yeah. And it was crazy. And uh, quite, quite a few they kids. lose to Keystone. Did they really? Got right on the bus and left. Uh, there was 24 teams. They, because they lost the first thing, they hopped on the bus and left. Wow. And uh, they showed up at Perkins. They drove all the way up to came to Perkins. Back on. Uh, it was great. We did that for three or four years. Did uh, did Rock, was Rock ever at Firelands after he left uh, Perkins? Okay, we are. Okay, we are back here at um, Charles A. Henry Field in Hiram, Ohio. Halftime score is the Hiram Terriers twelve, and the Ohio Wesleyan Battling Bishops seven. Um, we've got about eight minutes to go until the end of the half. Let's let's take a look at the offensive st statistics for the first half. Um, first downs, Ohio Wesleyan hit five. Hiram had 11. Um, rushing yards, 
Neither team has had a lot of success. Um, Ohio Wesleyan, 11 carries for 37 yards, and Hiram, 12, uh, 21 carries for 31 yards. Uh, passing yards, 64 for Ohio Wesleyan, 108 for Hiram. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan was um, 7 to 12 passing. Hiram was 12 of 19. Total offense, Ohio Wesleyan, 23 plays, 101 yards, and Hiram, 40 plays, 139 yards. Um, their kickoff returns, Ohio Wesleyan had one for 20. Hiram had one for 12 punts. Ohio Wesleyan, two for 46.5 yards, and Hiram, four for 39. Uh, fumbles, Ohio Wesleyan had one fumble, and they lost it. Hiram had none. Penalties, a uh, relatively penalty-free game. With Ohio Wesleyan with two penalties for 30 yards and Hiram two for 20. Time of possession, Ohio Wesleyan 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Hiram 19 minutes and 37 seconds. Third down conversions, something Al and I talked about before the game. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan was two of five. Hiram was four of 10. So nearly 50% for the Terriers. Fourth down conversions, um, Hiram was one for one. Red zone opportunities, uh, Ohio Wesleyan one for one, and Hiram was two for two. Let's look at the individual stats for each team. Starting with Ohio Wesleyan first, Devin Haley, six carries for 30 yards and a five-yard average. Uh, Jaki Alston, two carries, eight yards, and a four-yard average. Marquise Henry, two carries, four yards, a two-yard average. Caden Booza, one carry for minus five yards. Um, <clears throat> for Hiram, uh, Egya Kaysen Saki had three carries for 20 yards, average 6.7 yards. Gabe Hoskins, six carries, 13 yards. He averaged 2.2 yards per carry. Raquan Davis Herford, two carries, four yards. He averaged two yards a carry. And Isaac Cervantes, one carry, four yards. He averaged four yards a carry. Passing for Ohio Wesleyan, Caden Booza, 7 to 12, 64 yards, one TD, a uh, long play of 15, and he was sacked one time. Sean Tejada, 12 of 19 for 108 yards and a touchdown pass, the first for the Terriers this year. 25, a uh, long play of 25 yards. He was sacked four times. That'll have to be addressed in the second half. Uh, receiving for Ohio Wesleyan, Josh Hurst. He had three catches for 30 yards. Um, Tyler Webb, two catches, 28 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Jaki Alston, one catch, nine yards. Cooper Haley, one catch minus three yards for Hiram Jarius Green three catches 20 yards and one TD Tristan Mullahan two catches 35 yards with a long of 25 Raekwon Davis Herford two catches for 17 yards and Jordan Townsend two catches for 17 yards punting Gabriel Chabrowski Two punts, 93 yards, and averaged 46.5. He had one touchback. His long was 47 yards. Chris Miller, four punts, 156 yards. Uh, long of 58, he averaged 39.0 yards per kick. Punt returns, Jaki Alston for Ohio Wesleyan, one for 17 yards, and Drew Alston, one for zero yards. Uh, kickoff returns, Jaki Alston, one for 20 yards, and Ricardo Jimenez, one for 12 yards for Hiram. Tackles, Briar Aramey, seven total tackles and one sack. Seth Anderson, five total tackles. Mar Marquis Henry, four total tackles, and he had two sacks and two TFLs. That brings... Henry's total to seven sacks for the season. For Hiram, Dylan Balaker had three total tackles. Greg Wilson Jr., three total tackles. 
Cole Ture, three total tackles, and Zachary Shannon, three total tackles. Uh, first half scoring, second quarter, 12.25 to go. Hiram, number 81, Jaron Green, six-yard pass from number three, Sean Tejada. Miller's kick was good. Hiram led 7-0. In the second quarter, with four minutes and 30 seconds to go, Ohio Wesleyan. Tyler Webb, 13-yard pass from Caden Booza. Uh, Putt's kick was good, and we had a 7-7 ball game. In the second quarter, 125 to go. Number 40, Gavin Cruiser scores a safety against the Ohio Wesleyan quarterback, making the score 9-7. And with no time remaining on the clock, Chris Miller kicks a 39-yard field goal to put Hiram ahead 12-7 to at halftime. So those are our halftime statistics, and we have a pretty good ball game here, Al. Um, you know, exciting, and uh, we're going to get a couple ads in here. Um, so after the game, if you're uh, hungry, I recommend that you travel up Route 700 north out of Hiram to Route 422, take a left, head west, go a half a mile, and you will be at the world-famous Iron Horse Saloon. Um, have steaks, burgers, chicken, fish, uh, you name it, they have it. Stop in, try it out. Um, I think you'll like it. And that is the world-famous Iron Horse Saloon. Um, if you need shirts or signs for any occasion, if you're running for office, if you're having a party, if you're running a PTO and you need shirts for the community, whatever it might be, your sign needs can be met by Signations at 11 North Maple Street in Orwell, Ohio. Give us a call at 440-437-7446. Interested in becoming a supporter of Campus Nation and Division Three football? To become a patron for just $15, Call Rick Phillips at Campus Nation, 937-527-6674. Help Campus Nation bring more Division Three football to you. And patrons of this broadcast, uh, Hiram alumni of 1956, Alan Rayback. So that gets our bills paid here. Uh, we're going to get a Crooked Creek uh, ad, and then we will get back to... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Crooked River, <laughs> Creek River. They're the same, aren't they? <laughs> so we'll get back to that here in a second. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we are open year-round seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit CrookedRiverAdventures.com. So we're getting ready for the second half kickoff here where Hiram will be kicking to Ohio Wesleyan. Hiram leading 12-7, to and it's a wet, rainy October afternoon here in northeast Ohio, and we'd have it no other way, would we, Al, for, uh, for an October afternoon. You know what I like is uh, warm apple cider. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Hopefully someone, if you heard that, you'd like to bring it up to the press box. <laughs> uh, we are in the booth to the right as you come up the stairs. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I noticed that it must be getting chillier because the Hiram cheerleaders were all doing jumping jacks and uh, different exercises there probably to get some body heat going there oh, yeah. because uh, it looks like it's a little cold. Uh, uh, a pretty decent crowd for the weather, I would say. I mean... Uh, you know, at this point of the season, uh, you got to be a warrior to go out there and sit in this kind of weather. So, here we go with the 
kickoff for the second half. Miller drives the ball down to offside, uh, nearly the three three yard line, and it is um, Alston breaks out to the 35, over to 40, <clears throat> and I guess it's going to be coming back here. So, uh, looks like we will have. Um, now hopefully, we're going to get some scores here in the near future on some. Uh, some of the Division Three games in the conference. Uh, everybody started the same time, but we're not getting anything out of them. So we will see. But um, so now, how do they? What did, did they just tack this on to the end of the run, Al? Yeah, I believe they're going to. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, probably if they hadn't, I went, did they get a choice on that? If they hadn't had a good return, they would have. Yeah, I don't think they do. Oh, okay. I don't like them making my mind up for me so much. <laughs> you give me some, give me some options here. Okay, here we go. First and ten from the uh, Ohio Wesleyan forty-seven, two by two set. Cruza. Uh, is in the back. Booz has been backfield. Gets it out to Hurst. Hurst Ooh. right away picks up nice. about seven down to the Hiram 45-yard line. So we'll be looking at a second and three. And uh, Booza got that out there quickly to Hurst. And uh, Hurst was the leading receiver for the battling Bishops in the first half. Ohio Wesleyan's right back up on the line. Two by two set. Booza looks over the defense. Um, Haley in the backfield and gives it to Haley and Haley uh, wedges his way up. It looks like he's he might be a little short of the first down but it appears that they're yeah I think it's now they gave him the first down on that. So it's going to be another set of downs here for Wesleyan as they are at the 43 yard line. Okay. Three by one set. Uh, Pace is picked up for Wesley in here as they are uh, getting up to the line and getting plays rattled off here. Booza gets ready. There's the snap. He drops. He looks. <clears throat> hits Hurst in the middle right at about the 30-yard line. Good for about a 13-yard gain and a first down. And Ohio Wesleyan is marching. Uh, they look a lot different here, Al, than they did. They surely do. I think Coach had a talk with them at halftime. And uh, two by two set here. Booza looks it over. They are on the Hiram 30 yard line with 13 28 to go in the third quarter. Booza, it's ready. He drops. He looks. He gets it out to Hurst. And Hurst is down to about the 19 yard line, which should be good for a first down again. And uh, they're going to say just yeah, probably. It looks like they're going to mark it at the 20, first and 10 from Hiram's 20 for the battling Bishops. So uh, two by two set. Haley set to the right. Abuza. Abuza gets ready and looks things over. There's the snap. He gives it to Haley. Ah. Haley slashes off to the left. A nine-yard gain down to the 11-yard line. And it'll be second and one for Ohio Wesleyan. So there's some uh, tackles there. Yeah, yeah. And Hiram's defense needs to find that fire that they had in the first half there, Al. And Big just, time. So Wesleyan again is back up on the ball. They are ready to go. Two by two set. Booza looks things over. He gets ready for the snap. There it is. He gets it out quickly to Hurst. Hurst is over to the five. Touchdown. Down to the. Yes, he is in the end zone. So a 10-yard pass from Booza to Hurst. And just like that, with 12-10 to go, the opening drive for Ohio Wesleyan results in a touchdown, putting the battling Bishops ahead 13-12. to Now, Al, do you go for two here? To get the three-point lead, I wouldn't. I stay. I still say you it's still early. kick it. Yeah. Okay. So 
We'll see. But it looks like they may be. Yes, I think they are going they for are, it, too, yeah. though. So we've got a two-by-two two set here. Um, Haley to the left of Booza. Booza's looking over. He's going to motion uh, left to right with Webb. He looks. He's under pressure. He's more pressure. He rolls to his right. He throws it to the back of the end zone. Intended for Tyler Webb. Throw a flag. <coughs> That's uncatchable ball, in my opinion there, so I don't know that that could be. He took his hat off, so the receiver may have stepped out and stepped back in. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I don't – yeah, it doesn't appear to be. Yeah, so Hiram gets the stop on the two-point conversion, making it 13-12, to 12 and uh, so – Yeah, but illegal touching or – Yeah, after – Step came back in from being out of bounds. Okay, so um, some interesting situations have uh, come up in this game here. <laughs> We've seen a couple. Uh, so Ohio Wesleyan gets ready to kick off. And, uh, you know, this is time for Hiram to answer, Al. I mean, uh, they, they had a, a decent first half. They had some offensive production there. And they – just got punched in the mouth to start the second half now. So they need to answer and do the same thing right back to the battling bishops here. So I was going to ask you, if you're Hiram's head coach, what was your halftime speech? Um, keep on doing what you're doing, guys. Don't turn the ball over. Keep your heads about yourself. Don't get too excited. we got another 30 minutes to play. And uh, – We'll see. Uh, the defense seemed a little flat, although I would have to say Ohio Wesleyan looked much more efficient. Uh, kickoff is through the end zone and come out to the uh, come out to the twenty yard line there. No, twenty five yard. 25. Line. Last week at uh, I was at the Arizona State Colorado game. Yes, they screwed that up twice. Did they? They put. Uh, Put they the put 20. both teams at the 20, and then <laughs> they had a big conference with the coaches, and then it was got settled. It was back at the 25. At least, at least they, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, at least they did it to both so teams. One on the 35 right, right, right. Okay, so first and 10 from the 25 for Hiram. <clears throat> Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Kaysan Saki in the backfield. Play action fake. He's got green. Oh, oh. Boy, if he'd had that to the inside a little bit on there. Yeah. It was a fade to green, and it was just uh, thrown over the wrong shoulder, out of bounds. But uh, he had quite a few steps on the corner sure there. Did. He had him turned around. Yeah. And that is Smothers, the corner that was um, that he had beaten there. He yeah, <laughs> smothered, smothered him. <laughs> and he forgot to smother him on that one. So yeah. He uh, let him get by him. So, uh now it's, it's, it's so a penalty on Hiram. I didn't see. It must be uh, procedure, I would think. Yeah, I think it's a procedure. So it's repeat first down. First and fifteen from the twenty-yard line. So let's see where uh, what Hiram dials up here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Tejada gives it the case and Saki. Saki extends. Oh, that's a face mask. And uh, he's dropped for about a three-yard loss there. No but penalty. Wow. He was just <laughs> yanked right down to the turf by the yeah. face mask. No, they did not call it. And the guy was standing right there. So apparently he was watching the Ohio State uh, Purdue game <laughs> <laughs> on his phone. Oh, his phone yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't have time for this stuff. Um, so we've got second and 18 from the from the Hiram 17-yard line. Tejada, things broke down quickly. Tejada gets out to the right. He's in uh, trouble. There's nobody there. And, in oh! Oh! <laughs> and nearly an ill-advised pass by Tejada. He just threw it up. 
And uh, no receiver there either. No, well, that was what I was wondering what was going to happen with that because there was not a Hiram guy no. in the area there. Um, he wasn't outside of the tackle box. No, he wasn't. And uh, you know, our friend uh, Markel Henry was standing right there, <laughs> right there, was looking for his third sack of the game. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is going to be third and 18 for Hiram and uh, so we've got uh, three receivers to the right one to the left and here is the uh, case on Saki in the backfield Tejada steps up he's got green and green's got it and there's a flag. well a and I think they're going to pass interference. pass interference so it should be a first down for Hiram the green should have should have come down with that. Yeah, one. He, that was on him. Yeah, which would have easily been a first down on that. But uh, if it is interference, Terrier's drive will continue. And you know it's been a pretty clean game in the first half. There was only two penalties on each team, so it's not been a um, you know a game that's been marred by a lot of uh, penalties here. But it is. In fact, going to be a first down for Hiram after the pass interference. So we've got Ohio State 34, Purdue 0. And we've got Michigan 38, Indiana 7. So for your Big Ten scores here. And we will see what uh, what we've got. Okay, so Hiram comes out first and 10 from, the, from their own 32-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. And Tejada gets ready for the snap. He gets it. He gives it to Case on Saki. Saki is able to pick up maybe one yard. Yeah. And so it's going to be second and nine from the 33-yard line. And uh, so second and nine and um, 10.41 to go in the third period. And, and Hiram needs to – pick something up. They need to get a little bit of bounce in the step there, Al, to get back to where they were. Two by two set here. And Tejada gets ready for the snap. Looks like there's a blitz coming. Tejada drops. He gets it out quickly oh. to Mullahan, And uh, it's going to be third and nine. And, uh, and I think Mullahan needed – he was going to need a step ladder on that one a little bit to get up that to that. was high. Yeah. But um, – so we will try and see what we – if Division3.com is up to date here with some of the scores. 10-15 to go in this game in the third quarter. It is Ohio Wesleyan 13, Ohio and 12. And um, – there's a drop by Tejada. Tejada's got – he's got Davis Herford, and they're going to say he was out of bounds. He just did not have enough room there. But that's going to make it fourth down for the Terriers. And um, so, yeah, we have really – we're in a shutdown mode here with uh, – see if they get any refresh scores here. Oh, yeah, we got some there. Okay, so we're taking a look here. Okay, punting time for Chris Miller and the Terriers. Oh, and wow. goes out to about the 40-yard line. Not a not a very good punt compared to his other ones. Um, okay, we've got some Campus Nation scores. We've got Geneva and Teal tied 0-0 in the second quarter. We've got. <clears throat> Denison 14, Wabash 10 at halftime. Uh, Waynesburg 7, St. Vincent 0 in the second quarter. Ohio Wesleyan and Hiram, we know that is 13 to 12 in favor of Ohio Wesleyan. We've got, uh, let's see, okay, and let's get back to the game. First down for Ohio Wesleyan at the 39-yard line. And the give is to give is to Marquise Henry, and he picks up about three yards there as he gets out to about the 40, 42 yard line. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be second and 
eight for Ohio Wesleyan. And they have two receivers to the right, two, one to the left, Hurst is to the left. And Booza brings his tight end in motion. He bounces them back. And they're gonna give a oh, roll out by Booza to the right. And he gets the boo. And, and that was um, number two for uh, Number two there was uh, Jaki Alston on the catch. And, uh, and that was good enough for a first down. So at the 49 yard line of Hiram, uh, Ohio Wesleyan's on the move again into Hiram territory. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Booza gets ready for the snap, there it is. He gives the ball to Henry. Henry slashes up through Henry's able to pick up 12 yards, getting down to about the 37-yard line of Hiram, and Henry is hurt. They're double-teaming that nose. Yeah, and then the nose uh, uh, for Hiram had been doing a you know a decent job there, Alfred uh, Pedro. Pedro. I noticed he was from the – he's actually from Samoa. Yes, yes. He's one of those Samoan guys. They usually go to USC. Yeah, but you – Found his way out to Hiram. USC, yeah. BYU. It's kind of similar to, I can see the resemblance between Hiram and <laughs> the weather. USC. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, it's the weather. It's the weather that gets them out here. So, um, okay. So Henry is, uh, he's walking a little gingerly on his leg there. So let's have a hand there for Marquise Henry as he, you know, he's getting helped off the field. But um, yeah, first and ten from the 37-yard line for for Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, I'm marching down into the um, Hiram towards the Hiram end zone with 8:40 to go in the third period. Uh, and it, you know it's been a it's been a good game. Again, it's 13 to 12 at this point, and Hiram's defense needs to step up and turn uh, the battling bishops away here to have a chance. Okay, we've got two receivers to the left, one to the right. Um, they motion the tight end from right to left, and then they quick pitch out uh, Haley. And, oh, oh man! And Alfred Pedro uh, looks like he may have got a TF. Well, I think they're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage, but it's going to be second and ten. And that good job, good penetration. In that. Yeah, Pedro uh, worked his way down the line and. Made the tackle, so nice job there. <clears throat> and 8.02 to go in the game. So, or I'm sorry, in the half, in the third period. We're going to get this right here in a minute. <laughs> we know we're in the game, so. We're in the game. It's, it's, it's in a quarter. It's one of the quarters, okay? Bounce motion by the tight end. And ball is given to Haley. And, oh, another. Oh. The number 13. 13 for the Terriers. It's Riley Huff. Okay. Riley Huff, the defensive end, 6'1", 260, from McNicholas High School in Amelia, Ohio. Uh, makes the uh, – again, I thought it was going to be a TFL, but they said no. So it's third and ten, and we've got a two-by-two two set here. And Booz is looking it over. Now we know it's going to be a pass, so we're going to have to get some pressure here, guys. On um, Booz, it looks like the outside linebacker may be coming, and sure Ooh, enough, he is. Sure is. And that is ground. short-armed it, and it's going to be. Well, the question is, is it going to be punting time for them, or? Uh, and it looks like Booza might be hurt, so I think that makes up their mind for him. Although we haven't seen Womack like we thought we no. would see. So. He's warming up, though. I see him running back and forth. Yeah, right probably there. now, I would say. So, um, so punting time for Ohio Wesleyan, and I believe this would be uh, Ethan Chips would be punting. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It is not. Oh, yeah, it is. And that ball is kicked into the end zone, so a 37-yard punt. And that's going to come out to the 20. And I'll correction on that, that was number 84 that punted, which is Ian Staten. 
So that is um, where Hiram turns, you know, Hiram's defense stepped up, Al, and was able to um, get themselves in a position to get the ball back. And now they've got to get something going. They can't keep on playing in, in uh, their own end zone here because – Eventually, Wesleyan's going to take advantage of that. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And Tejada moves Hoskins over, gives Hoskins the ball. He goes to his right. He slashes up. Ooh, met pretty violently there. And we'll see who that is. That is number 13, which is um, 13 is Charlie Hornacek. The yeah, six foot, two hundred and thirty pound junior linebacker. A great football name. I should have his football <laughs> card. Yeah, <laughs> he's back with Buckus or something. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he played like Buckus yeah. on that one. Uh, second and nine for Hiram from twenty one. They give the Hoskins again, and uh, Hoskins picks up another yard. So it's going to be third and eight. I would have to bring in Broomball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, he's just uh Well, they might want to go to that power pistol and use Broomba as the, you know, maybe a lead blocker yeah. or something to give him some, a little bit more push on that. Uh, 5.49 to go in the third quarter. We've got third and eight for Hiram from their own 22-yard line. And there's going to be five against. Offside. It's going to be encroachment against. So that's something you'd have to explain to me. What's the difference from encroachment to offsides? Because some officials will say encroachment, and some will say offsides. My interpretation is the same thing. Is it <laughs> okay? Yeah. To give you an answer on that, I mean, I I agree with you, but you know, you'll watch a game, you'll hear them say encroachment, and then you'll hear them say offsides, and and it, it's basically the same same thing. Okay. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And now, here's a third and three for Hiram. Three receivers left. Tejada drops. He gets it to oh. Townsend, and oh. Townsend's off and running. Wow. And he's down up to the 45-yard line. Safety in the corner about knocked themselves out. Yeah. Number nine still woozy. Well, 20's going yeah. off the field. 18-yard <laughs> play for uh, Tejada wow. to Townsend, and – at Townsend, boy, he was uh, motor, and he was thinking about going to the end yeah, zone. He was. One. So Hiram's got a new set of downs at the 46-yard line. Two-by-two two set. Todd gives the ball to Hoskins. And I don't think they're not going to give him anything on that. So we're going to be at second and ten. I tell you what, I'd run something else, come back to that look, and tell the QB to keep it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I was – yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a read option would have been a uh, a good good call there. 4.30 to go in the third period. Second and 10 for Hiram from their own 46-yard line. Two receivers to each side. And Tejada drops. He's got lots of pressure. He gets out to his left. Another hold. It's going to be holding. And it's a uh, very short gain. Now, here's, here's going to be an interesting call for Ohio Wesleyan, whether they decide to take that or not, because I, there was a very minimal gain. And would they take the down instead of? Okay, so they're going to take it. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a. Wow. Third and Tuesday. Third. <laughs> Third, third and Tuesday here. Wow, that's and uh, well, I guess you know. Sometimes you wonder whether taking the, if there's minimal gain taking it down when you're gonna yeah, you know, gonna force them to to do something here. Third down or second down, three receivers left, one to the right. Tahada gets ready. He drops. He looks. He looks. He's got pressure. He gets out to his left. He's still look. Pressured, gets it to Hoskins, and Hoskins is able to, you know, get out to almost the 50-yard line, to the 49. And so, um, third you know, and six. third and manageable, third, yeah, third and six. Wow. So, um, nice, boy, I thought it was looking bad for Tejada there on that one. 
He's starting to make me believe he's Fran Tarkin. Yeah, too. yeah, for sure. He's scrambling all over the place. Man. Okay, two receivers to the right, two to the left. If you guys so, don't know who Fran so, Tarkin yeah, is, we'll have to look yeah, yeah. him up. But <laughs> that guy was a played when but, it Played when Butkus was playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Hiram gets ready. Hoskins motions to the right. They get him a flare pass out there. And, oh, he gets up to the 50-yard line, maybe uh, pick up a one. I think the with the pass being thrown behind him really hurt yeah, him hurt as far him. as being able to pick up any significant yardage on that. Something about their little flare passes I don't like. I'm not sure what it is. I, I, you know what I think it is, Al, is they're, they're too flat on it. You know, usually you want to get a little a little yeah. bubble so that back has some up forward uh, momentum when he catches the ball. And it seems like they're catching it when they're still running sideways. Uh, yeah. But here's the kick. And Miller gets a pretty nice kick there. Oh, and Ooh. he's going to get the benefit of another great so bounce. Now, yeah. And it looks like it's going to die at the four-yard four line. line. So Chris Miller gets another uh, nice punt out there. It'll be a 46-yarder. And so uh, so this is, uh, you know, where Hiram made Wesley and Pay one time with a safety when they got pinned down here before. So maybe uh, – Maybe they can repeat that with uh, 2.10 to go in the third period. And um, they really need to, you know, create a turnover here or, you know, go out on downs and keep them pinned so that they they can keep the field position that they've just uh, got. So three receivers to the right. Uh, Booza is back in the game. And he gets the ball out quickly to, I believe that's Hurst, and Hurst is out over to 10, uh, out to the, looks like to the 15-yard line. And that's going to be enough for a first down there. So, well, is it a first down? It appears it is. Yeah, it is a first yeah, down. So, um, okay, so first down for Ohio Wesleyan at their own 15-yard line. So, th that kind of hurt, though. You know, let them out of there that quickly on that. Okay. Two receivers to each side. Booza is getting ready for the snap. He drops. He looks. He looks. He's got a little pressure. Gets, oh. Wow. And that's going to be no, maybe a loss there. No gain for sure. And that is, uh, I'm trying to see who that is. It's number 45 for Hiram. And that would be... Uh, uh, Rajon Yomas, okay, the 5'9", 181-pound freshman. And uh, he is from University Prep in Rochester, New York. Okay, there's the drop. Booza drop. They drop it off to Haley, and Haley is able to. Oh, oh, Haley man. is out over to 40, out to the 42-yard line on a little dump-off pass out of the backfield. And uh, Devon Haley is... Uh, Made, made the Terriers pay on that. Now, Hiram did get some pressure there, but uh, they were able to drop the ball off quickly and, and pick up a first down on a significant run. So now it is first and 10 from the 48-yard line. And two receivers each side for Ohio Wesleyan. And... They're getting ready for the snap. They give it to Haley again, and Haley is up over the 45, out to about the 47-yard line, pick up about three or four yards. It's going to be second and six. And we are almost at the end of the third quarter here. So Ohio Wesleyan will walk over to their sideline as they enjoy a one-point lead right now. And that will be the end of the third period with Ohio Wesleyan 13 and Hiram 12. So, Al, at this point, coming into the fourth quarter, what would your ideas be if you're Hiram? How are you, how are you approaching this? Would you, uh, Wesleyan is slowly gathering momentum here. Uh, what are your words of wisdom to the defense right now? Uh, definitely pressure, some uh, different games up front. Uh, maybe add a blitz, but different, uh, different gaps. Okay. So a little gap keep control. Them, keep them guessing, especially with uh, that 3-3. Three, three. Right, right. So you've you got to bring a variety of looks. 
Uh, let's see. Maybe we're going to get a little time here to take a look. And uh, I think we're going to get a, next time we get a break, let's get a, a Crooked River commercial in. Okay. So, um, so Ohio Wesleyan is out and they're getting ready here. They are at their own 47 yard line looking at uh, second and six. And so motion by Alston and Alston is up over to 50 out to about the 46 yard line of Hiram and that will be good enough for a first down. Um, okay, OAC score, we've got Mount Union 28, Capital 0. We've got Franklin 21, Defiance 6. We've got uh, we've got DePaul 23, Wooster 0. Okay, 2x2 two two set for Ohio Wesleyan and they give it to Haley and met by a host of Terriers there. Um, number for Hiram, it was um, Jalen Glass was involved in that and uh, just not much going there. Okay, so it's going to be second and eight for Ohio Wesleyan and two by two set you ready they drop boozer looks oh and i wow okay so a, a no call on that um <laughs> he was asking for pat i thought rajon yomas was going to definitely get hit with a pass interference but we're not going to say anything al yeah okay let's see <clears throat> Wisconsin Whitewater 12, Wisconsin River Falls 0. For those who follow all of Division 3. Okay, and now we've got um, three, three men to the right, and then Booza gets it out to Hurst, and Hurst catches the ball there about the uh, – Looks like it's going to be about the 32, 33 yard line. Good for a first down for a high. It looks like a 31 yard line. Yeah. And it's going to be good for a first down for them. And uh, they're starting to pick up the pace again now. So. Okay. John Carroll. So we got uh, John Carroll, Ohio Northern is uh, 13 to nothing. John Carroll. Okay. And then there's a little flare pass to Webb from Booza and nice. nothing there. And there's going to be a penalty. That could be holding on one of the wide receivers, I think, for Ohio Wesleyan. So we'll see what we get on that. But Booza threw a little flare pass. And um, a lot of times those are wide receivers uh, holding, holding on yeah. the edge. So we'll see what, uh, what they come up with. But that would really help Hiram's efforts here in uh, stopping this current drive. Wow. No foul on the play. Wow. Okay. So, first and ten here. Now they're going to call. It's going to be second and looks like about 12 is what it's going to be. So, second and 12, 13 minutes to go in the ball game. And Ohio Wesleyan, by the slimmest of margins, 13 to 12, so now they're going to call it still first down. Okay. How it's first down. and Okay. And then Booza rolls to his left. He drops it off to number 85, who wow. is the tight end, Alex Woods. I think it's the first time we've seen Alex catch a, a pass today. And it was just a short gain. So a pickup of um, about two or three yards. And... So you've got uh, two receivers to the right, one to the left, and Wesleyan is now slowing things down, trying to milk the clock. Okay, we've got two by two set. 
And we got Haley off to the left of Booza. And they are just going to methodically try to milk the clock here to put themselves in a position to really, if they go down and score, is going to make it extremely more difficult for him. Now, uh, Booza on a run and f number 44. Nice tackle. For Hiram. That's that Cole uh, Terreri? Cole Terreri uh, steps up and makes a play, a big play, because uh, Booza was looking at the first down, Al, and yeah. he just uh, <coughs> he stopped him in his tracks. So we are at um, fourth and five, and Ohio Wesleyan's in that no man's land, so they can't punt. So uh, a little bit too far for a field goal, so they're going to go for it. And they just got him for five on offsides. Did he throw a flag? I don't know if he did. I didn't see it on the sideline. Gave him the first, though. Yeah, and it was a first down to Hurst on a little uh, little curl on the sideline. And that is going to be good for a first down at about the 19 of Hiram. And time ticks away with 10.57 to go in the game. And Ohio Wesleyan moves a little bit closer to the end zone here as, as uh, the Terrier defense is looking a little tired right now, Al. And they've been out here a lot in this second half. Sure have. Okay, so Booza gives the ball to Haley, and Haley bounces off sure the, tackle, the, down sure to the 15, tackles. down to the 13, and that's where he'll be stopped. And we'll see, that is... Uh, who's getting up off the bottom of that pile. It was our tackler, number two, Jimenez, came up and made the uh, the tackle, Ricardo Jimenez. So um, this would be second and three here. And again, it just, uh, you know, Hiram just has to create a turnover here. I mean, if, even if they would be able to f force a stop here at this point, and there's the jet, jet sweep to Webb. And they've got it strung out. Nice, nice job by Hiram. And I think they're going to be short. Yeah, about a yard, I think. Yeah. So it's going to be third and one from about the 11-yard uh, line. And so this is this is crunch time. The, the Terriers will need to step up, uh, get some penetration, try to get a, a, a tackle for a loss. Although Wesleyan... Could pull up and throw here, and they don't. Outside they run. give it to Haley, and Haley Touchdown. is in the end zone on an 11-yard run. And really, um, it was just it was just the attrition now. I mean, Hiram's defense was getting worn out yeah, there. Yeah, they were getting and, worn, yeah. And um, so there's a flag. So it's probably it's going to be unsportsmanlike. Yeah, probably unsportsmanlike conduct. So we'll wait to see here, although they have put the points up on the board. So it's right now Ohio Wesleyan 19 and Hiram 12. And, of course, now you know the one thing, Al, that two-point conversion would put Hiram in a position for a touchdown and a two-point conversion yeah. to tie it. So, um, so we'll see what happens on this. And I guess, you know, the – now, I don't know if this would be attached to the extra point or not. Because if it was attached to the extra point, that could make things interesting. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, now this makes this real interesting on the extra point. Because then a Hiram touchdown can, uh, can tie this game up. Or Hiram goes for the win one way or other on that. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be about a 29-yard extra point. It's getting like an NFL extra point there. Yeah. And I think he missed it. He did? Yeah. Okay. So it is no good. <clears throat> and the score remains 19-12 to 12 after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So Hiram is in a great position here to, uh, you know, go down and, you know, a touchdown can tie the game. There's 9.20 to go, plenty of time. And we could have one of those fantastic finishes here. 
So uh, we will see what happens here. Uh, Al, any ideas? You know, if you're you're Hiram, what you're looking at coming out here, what uh, what would be your your advice to them as they come out for this uh, all important drive? Um, you, I would think uh, short to intermediate passes. Um, spread the field. I don't. I don't want to go empty, but I would two by two wide as I can. Okay. So Al's, stretch them out. Al saying we want to look at a two by two here. Get get things spread out a little bit. Quarterback power. Quarterback powers. Something that uh, they can can get going on. Uh, okay. So we've got uh, Ohio Wesleyan kicking off here. And the ball goes down to, uh, Short kick. to it looks like it's going to be and none of them want it. Kriegel. And now they – and Kriegel has dropped wow. at about the seven, six or seven-yard line. So Bryce Kriegel, uh, after a miscommunication on that, puts Hiram in a real tough spot here. Yeah, if I'm special teams coach, we're probably having a meeting, long one tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, I would think. Because even with the punter, I'm having issues. With right. The, right. Well, uh, and it, the thing we talked about, when to return them and that. I mean, you, you, you've got to – when there's no pressure on you got to try to return that thing yeah. and get some yards on it. Okay, so we got a two-by-two two set, it appears. Now we've got a, a – Power pistol formation with two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tejada gets ready. He looks. He gets it out. Oh. Did he drop it? No, I he kept it. Thought he did. I think he he started to drop it. He did. He, 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 re, he re-caught it. I think that uh, might be Davis Herford on that. Yeah, he got bent up. Yes, it is. It's Raekwon. Uh, oh, no. It's uh, – might be Jarris uh, Green. 81, I thought. 11. 30. Is it 11 no, or it's eight. No, it's Jarris Green. It's Jarris that Green. is, it, yeah. Yeah. So Jarris, uh, he's just running it off. He came off the field. He's still running. And, yeah, trying to – doesn't want to let it in this kind of day, let things uh, tighten up for him. Okay, we got two receivers to the right, one to the left, and it's a give to – Hoskins and uh, very little going there. Yeah, they need that power pistol look, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think bring Brumbaugh in as the uh, lead. Or you put Townsend in there as the lead, which they may be doing. They just brought uh, Townsend in, actually. Yeah, they took Brumbaugh out. He right. was in. I didn't think he was in. <clears throat> okay, so we got a two-by-two two here. Second and ten. And... Uh, Hoskins in the backfield with Tejada. He motions Hoskins. Oh, he dropped the and ball. And he dropped the ball. And he gets still out up. of it. Got green. And he's still going. And he gets uh, up to about the 25, 26 yard line. So it's going to be third and four. Um, yeah, hit the, lost the handle on that one, Al. And it was not looking good there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say this second half, uh, you know, Markel, uh, Markel Henry. He's been awful has, quiet. Has, yeah, he's not really been the factor he was in the first half there with two TFLs and two sacks in the first half. Okay, 7.48 to go in the game. Hiram's looking at a third and five, and they get the ball out. and Caught it. Yes. So, Raekwon Davis Herford with a first down catch at the 34-yard line, and Hiram's got a new set of downs. I listened a little bit. I said a little short pass. Yeah, yeah, you did. Get them going. And they, they've got to keep this uh, momentum going here. Chip away. Okay, they got a two-by-two two set. Todd gives it to Hoskins. Hoskins burst up to up to about the 40-yard line, six-yard gain. And uh, it's going to be second and four. And that was encouraging, you know. Of yeah. course. That was one of those unexpected plays, too. I don't think they expected Hoskins to get the ball on that. and uh, So that worked out well. Great call by the Hiram staff there with 6.57 to go. Uh, two by two set here. 
and Tejada gets ready. There's the snap, and we'll play action to Hoskins. He steps up in there, and oh, oh man! And gr <laughs> and Green inadvertently bumped into the um, into the safety. He almost tipped it to him. And yeah, and he he tipped it up and almost caught it. Um, would have been a great. Oh, Would have been a huge play for big the time. Yeah. Okay. So we've got. Um, here we go. Third and four still. <clears throat> so uh, now they're in a uh, two back set with Tejada in the middle, and he gives it to D Davis Herford, and Fine. he's oh, hunting another butt like hit there. Yeah. As uh, number nine, Jake Smothers. Boy, that's the second time Jake has come up and welcomed people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he smothered him on that one. He did. <laughs> so, um, let's see what the call is because I'm thinking it might be holding on Hiram. And if that's the case, this would be a devastating call for them at this point with 6.35 to go in the game. We'll hold judgment right here until the zebra gets to the middle of the field and lets us know what's going on here. Okay, so uh, it is they're facing the wrong direction here, guys. So it is going to be on Hiram. So um, okay, guys. So how about letting everybody else in the world know oh, what's yeah. going on, except for. Okay, so we've got Ohio State 34, Purdue 7-0. Oh, man, thought the Buckeyes were going to get a shutout. There's 10-24 to go in the fourth quarter there. Um, and let's see, we see any interesting things for uh, Kyle McCord, 16-28 for 276 and three touchdowns. Nice game. Uh, Dallin Hayden, 10 carries for 75 yards. Nice. Okay, and uh, – Marvin Harrison Jr. six catches for 105 yards and a touchdown for the Buckeyes. Uh, True freshman. Yeah. Carnell Tate. Carnell Tate. Cade Stover four catches, 53 yards and two touchdowns. So the the Buckeyes. Uh, okay, so it was holding. Okay. Five in the backfield. Okay, so it was not holding. So it's going to make it, that should be a repeat of the down though. So they should move it to second down, right? Yes. Michigan 52 and Indiana seven. So Michigan finally uh, woke up and got on track <laughs> there. But we were hoping they wouldn't. So um, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Davis Herford in the backfield with Tejada. And he motions Davis Herford, and he looks, and Tejada tries to get out of the pocket, but no, he is dragged down by number 87, Tyler Yanks, the defensive end there. And as we talked about in the pregame, Al, as the defensive ends uh, could present problems for the Hiram offensive line. And yeah, they, would, they uh, definitely did on that. Yes, they have. So... 5.48 to go in the game. Hiram is forced to punt. Miller is in, and they will be punting from uh, their own 34-yard line. There's the kick, and it's a high kick for Miller, fielded by Alston, and he is up the sideline back to the uh, – they say mar was marked out at the uh, their own 48-yard line, so that is where – Ohio Wesleyan will take over at this point. And um, just, uh, you know, the, the defense has done what they could do today, Al, I think. Um, the offense has been a touch better, but just not good enough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've still got some time, but the defense is going to have to do some, uh, create some miracles here in the sense that they're going to have to get a turnover or they definitely can't give up. You know, they give up two first downs, and this one's probably in the books. Right. So, um, and I would suspect you're going to see uh, Wesleyan probably try to keep it on the ground at this point. 
but we will see. So one, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Uh, Booza with Haley offset to his right side, gets ready for the snap. He drops and he gives it to Haley and Haley is piled up there. I see um, Cole Ture in there and uh, number 13 for Hiram is, see what we get. Um, so a bunch, a host of terriers in there and um, we'll see what we have here. Okay, so second and eight for Hiram. I mean, uh, for Ohio Wesleyan. And two by two set. Webb in motion. They give Webb the ball on the jet sweep. They extend them. They've got him cut back in. And uh, Ture is in there again, along with, let's see who it is. Ture can find the ball. I, I don't really like this kid. Yeah, and uh, Rashawn Yomas, or Rajon Yomas, was also in on that play. Third and six here, Al. And this is really your ball game right here. 4.14 to go. Pyram can force a stop here, then they've got get the ball back with sufficient time, but uh, they cannot give this one up. And what we've seen in the last few drives is a little quick screen to Hurst is usually where they've went just to pick up that. And uh, they look and oh, it's picked off by Hiram's linebacker. It is Gavin Cruiser, I believe. No, I check that. Yeah, it is Cruiser. Gavin Cruiser with his second interception of the year. And uh, wow, what an opportune time. We just talked about that, Al, is that uh, this was the drive that they had to stop them and yeah. make something happen. So another great effort by the Hiram defense. 349 to go, and this is your ball game for the Hiram Terriers. Um I tell you, the defense has done some things today. They've done a good job. I mean, uh, you know, considering Al, where, where they're at, they were average, giving up 49 points a game coming yeah. into this. So now, I mean, to only give up 19 points to this explosive Ohio Wesleyan team is a great effort by the Terriers. Uh, stack to the right, one receiver to the left. Tejada drops. He looks. He gets the ball out quickly to Mullahan. Mullahan steps out of bounds after picking up another first down and about a 13-yard gain for Mullahan. So Hiram is at the 32-yard line of Ohio Wesleyan. And uh, Todd looked good there. He stood in the pocket, stepped sure up, threw the ball. Stood tall. Um, so here we go again. We've got uh, Kaysen Sackey in the backfield. Hiram's got three to the left, one to the right here. And... Okay, Tejada drops. He's in under all out sorts out of, of duress, and he gets out of the – and he was able to get rid of it. He got out of the pocket. and So, uh, wow, great play by Tejada because I didn't see that happening that way. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be second and ten. And, uh, man, he has got out of some of – he's a magician getting out of that – out of those sacks. I mean, he could easily have been down 10 times today yeah. if it wasn't for his efforts there. So 3.15 to go in the game. 19-12, uh, to 12, Ohio Wesleyan, and Hiram needs uh, needs something here, Al. Uh, Two-by-two two set for Tejada. Uh, emotions, Case and Sackey out. Gets the ball. Oh, and I thought, thought Davis Herford made a one-hand catch, catch there for it, a minute, yeah. yeah. Okay, third down and uh, third and ten. And uh, so, you know, you know there, is, there is no uh, punt involved with this one. No. So this is uh, four down territory all the way. So Mullahan and Davis Herford to the right. You've got Townsend to the left. And you've got uh, Tejada. Takes a drop. Wow, yeah. what a rush. And it gets it out to Whoa, and Green as a first down at the 20 yard line. 21 yard line. The receiver got mugged before that. He team. did. 
And great job by Tejada. Stepped up, gunned the ball out to Green. And uh, a new set of downs for the Terriers at the 21-yard line. And they are on the move. 2.55 to go in the game. Okay, there is oh, a little quick screen out to Davis Herford. And he got gets the ball up to about the 14-yard line. Ohio Wesleyan, yeah, I would think it is. We're hearing a little noise up in the, pre the coach's box above us, and they, they <laughs> our light's going to come so, crashing yeah. down on us. Okay, so second and about three, 225. Oh, and I think that's going to be on Ohio Wesleyan. I think so, Yeah, I think that is encroachment on the defense. There I go. I'm doing that encroachment thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, they go. Okay, so that's a first down for the Hiram Terriers. That's going to move the ball inside the 10, down to the 9-yard line. So it is first and goal from the 9 with 2.20 to go, and Hiram couldn't ask for a, couldn't ask for a better situation right yeah. here. Okay. Uh, so... Case and Sackey moves to the right of Tejada. Tejada drops, gives it to Case and Sackey. He's off the left and really should have just kept on going that for the corner. Right yes, there, yes, man. yes, yes. Sometimes you just got to believe. Yeah, you that cutback isn't always there. Yeah, it's not, you know. Sometimes you find big bodies in there that will uh, put some hurt on you when they step in there. I think I could have took, uh, taken a VW Rabbit through that <laughs> hole. That was, yeah, that was, that yeah. was a nice hole. It was a good hole. Got to trust and believe. Okay, so we got uh, second and goal from the eight. That was a pickup of one. And uh, so Tejada motions, Case and Sackey out. Yeah. Slant! Oh! Yeah, that was beautiful. That was a great play by the defender on that. And uh, that was uh, intended for Jarris Green. And uh, we'll see who was our corner on that side. But it's 20. One. Uh, and that's Tyler Neal. Great play by Tyler Neal. He's out of uh, Central Canton Central Catholic. Okay, so Tejada, one thirty-three to go in the game. Third down from the eight. He drops. He looks. He's pressured. He gets the ball. Oh, he threw it to Mullahan, but no call there. And that was Jake Smothers again on the coverage. Yeah. So he's been an active uh, corner for them. Let's go empty. Okay, so here it comes. And, yeah, I would go empty too. I don't know that I'd – Empty. I'm, I might bring in an extra receiver and to get motion. Case and Sackey out. And, yeah. But uh, that's just me. Three, to, three receivers to the right. Case and Sack, he moves to the left. One green up to the top. He steps up. He's got green Wide touchdown. Open. Terriers. Just need the one. He's that going might, for yeah, two. Yeah, when you're at this point in the yeah. season, you might as. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh -oh. So we have. A 19-18 game, 122 to go, wow. and uh, what a throw. Had two touchdown passes in this game <laughs> after none for the season. It's been a great performance by Tejada. Um, he's been under duress all, oh, all yeah. game. But uh, here we go. So, Case and Sackey to the well, – and it's going to be a timeout by Ohio Wesleyan, and why not is you got to figure they want to make sure they got everything right on this. And so, uh, and, and for the Hiram Terriers, what a, you know, last week a 21-7 loss to Wittenberg, one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. So, uh, they, they built off of that, Al. They, you know. They really they, did. Um, their, their defense is showing some great uh, tenacity today. And we're gonna see. Yeah, go ahead. 
autumn is an excellent time to enjoy the great outdoors. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we're open year-round seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit crookedriveradventures.com. Okay, so we're back. So the two-point conversion up and coming for the Hiram Terriers. They've got th two receivers to the right, one to the left. Tejada moves Saki over to his left. There it is. He, and he's got Saki going to the corner. Oh, and he is stopped. He is stopped by Tyler Neal again. And Neal has done that several times today. Yeah. Him and Smothers have done a great job on the corners there for uh, for Wesleyan. So, um, wow. Well, comes the onside. And, you know, that was – I give Coach Rosinski credit. I mean, go for the win. Go for the win, yeah. You're home. Uh, you know, that would have been a great program builder for him to get that at this point of the season. So uh, here we go with 122 to go and the onside kick up and coming. And what's what's your favorite onside kick in this situation? Honestly, I like – I always you I like did the it bounce? one time. I told the kicker to – I need him to practice kicking it about seven, eight, seven to eight yards. And, uh, and I would tell my guys to – had specific assignments, mm -hmm. but whoever that first – kid for the other team because it's supposed to roll 10 right but if they're smart they know they can touch it right they can cover it and they always want to pick it up and i said as soon as that kid's fingertips you got to time it just right right and hit him when he goes to pick that right, up right, we'll right. take our chances right and that worked for us the one <laughs> the, yeah yeah the one, and that was high school but it worked it worked that one time it looks like they're gonna do the bounce here and Ohio Wesleyan's got nine up within 10 yards. And the ball's oh. – oh. They weren't all there either. Right at no, point. no. He just didn't get the lift on it. No. If he got at the jump, Hiram would have been in position for that. So, great effort there. And uh, so, Ohio Wesleyan, uh, Hiram does have all, all three, three timeouts. Yeah. So, I mean, they're – you know, they're going to have to – make a decision on one of the plays but um, I'd say this one depending on what the play is you probably gonna take a timeout right after this is over so um, here is your ball game two receivers to the right or three receivers to the right one to the left uh, and Booza moves the tight end woods over they give the ball to Henry and he is able to pick up about five yards I'm sorry, Haley on that. And uh, Haley was able just to slide through there, Devon Haley. And uh, so, so yeah, this, this cannot – at this point, Al, the first down is not an option. No. So – No. Uh, Hiram has to uh, either pry the ball out or just, you know, stop him for minimal gains here. Uh, this, uh, it's going to be a tall task for the Hiram defense right here. And it looks like the uh, the weather is starting to degrade a little bit more. As I see a lot of umbrellas have popped out in the, the bleachers. Uh, my kudos to the Hiram fans because this is not a uh, fit day for man nor beast out here. No. So, okay, Hiram's defense is ready to go. They are up and on the ball. So uh, Ohio Wesleyan is, uh, you know, la last time they, they turned the ball over, Hiram turned in the points. So, you know, anything is possible right here. I don't I don't expect him to throw the ball. I would expect Haley would be the uh, recipient of this. And sure enough, no, it's uh, Booza. And Booza's going to get – and Booza slides down at the 30-yard line after – passing the first down marker 
and that's probably going to be it. Uh, Hiram will make them snap the ball as many times as possible. But uh, 108 to go, and that's Hiram's uh, second timeout. So, guys, I mean, uh, been a great game today. Definitely something that I think they, like you said, they had a close game last week, mm -hmm. built on it, came in today with a positive attitude, and I would try to continue that and be like, hey, guys, look, we can, <laughs> we're making great strides here. So when we look at the uh, – if we look at the standings here uh, going into Hiram's homecoming game next week against Oberlin. We've got uh, Oberlin is 0-3 in the league. With, of course, today's results aren't in. Hiram is 0-4 without today's results. Uh, the thing that stands out to me is the amount of points that Oberlin scored. They've only scored 13 and given up 195. Hiram scored 47 and given up 165. So, um, I think that, uh, and there'll be one more timeout. So there is 104 to go, and that will probably end it here, guys. But, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you look at that game next week, and there's probably no reason why Hiram can't come away with a, a victory in that. Is, um, you know, they're. Uh, you know, when you look at the overall statistics, Oberlin's one and four, and Hiram is 0 oh and six. But Hiram has scored 82, and Oberlin scored 60. And uh, so I would expect a pretty even matchup next week, Al. Yeah. I think that, you uh, know, I, I think, you know, Oberlin got their, their seniors got their first win in four years in the second game of the year. Yeah. And so this could be. Um, you know, for Hiram, they're just saying, okay, here's our here's our door, and uh, we need to take it. Yeah, so. they come in with this energy. Yeah. Hiram, if they come in with the energy they had today, yeah. uh, next week, I think. Uh, they got a shot. They definitely got a shot. Okay, so under one minute to go. And um, so it's been, uh, been a good game. And um, for Ohio Wesleyan, a lot of young kids for them. Uh, they move to their overall record moves to uh, four and three and three and two in the league. And um, so they have a lot to look forward to in the future. They're yeah, out. They do. They're out. Get some young kids. And if they build on that with some more good recruiting classes, um, they'll have nothing to be ashamed of. So. From Charles A. Henry Field in Hiram, Ohio, your final score is Ohio Wesleyan 19 and the Hiram Terriers 18. Uh, stay with us here as we will get some final stats to you guys. And let's get some, um, you know, Al, I'm, I, the game's over and there's probably, probably going to need something to eat here. You, you know any places around here that we could go to? Uh, no, you may want to tell me one. That's... Okay. Uh, what about the world-famous Iron Horse Saloon? Sounds good. Okay. And uh, they have steak, chicken, fish, you name it. They've got it. Uh, head five miles out of Hiram on Route 700 North. And when you come to Route 422, you take a left, go a half mile. And on the right-hand side is the world-famous Iron Horse Saloon. Check it out. I think you won't be disappointed. Okay. Um, do you need shirts or signs for any occasion? If you do, call Signsations at 11 North Maple Street in Orwell, Ohio. Or call them at 440-437-7446. Are you interested in becoming a supporter of Campus Nation and Division Three football? To become a patron for just $15, call Rick Phillips at Campus Nation, 937-527-6674. And thanks to our patron for today's game, Alan Rayback, Hiram Class of 1956. And uh, so we will get things uh, wrapped up here. 
Uh, my thanks to Al Matthews, no Brody Garrett on the board, Rick Phillips, the do-all of everything. And uh, we will hopefully have some final stats here before we wrap up. And then uh, next week we will be right back here to Hiram as we will have the Hiram Terriers and the Oberlin Yeoman. Okay, here's our final stats. Uh, to run things down, first downs, Ohio Wesleyan 18, Hiram 17. Uh, rushing yards, Ohio Wesleyan 30 carries for 92 yards, Hiram 31 carries for 30 yards. Passing, Ohio Wesleyan 182 yards, Hiram 200. Uh, passes, complete, incomplete, and interceptions. You've got Ohio Wesleyan was 20 of 28 with one interception. Hiram was 21 of 37. Total offense, Ohio Wesleyan, 58 plays for 274 yards. Hiram, 68 plays for 230 yards. Uh, punt returns, Ohio Wesleyan, 3 for 26. Kickoff returns, Ohio Wesleyan, 2 for 58. Hiram for 2, 2 for 15. Interceptions, Hiram had one with a 14-yard return. Punts, Ohio Wesleyan, three for an average of 43.3. Hiram, seven for an average of 37. Fumbles lost. We've got Ohio Wesleyan, one fumble and one fumble lost. Penalties, Ohio Wesleyan, six for 66 yards. Hiram, six for 45. Time of possession. We have Ohio Wesleyan, 27 minutes and 13 seconds. Hiram, 32 minutes and 47 seconds. Third down conversions. We had Ohio Wesleyan, 4 of 11, and Hiram was 7 of 18. Getting close to that 50% mark, though, Al, yeah. on that. Fourth down conversions. Uh, Ohio Wesleyan, 1 of 1, and Hiram was 2 of 2, guys. And then red zone chances, both teams were 3 of 3. <clears throat> to get to individual statistics here, Ohio Wesleyan rushing. Devin Haley, 16 carries, 74 yards. He had one touchdown. Marquise Henry, four carries, 18 yards. Jaki Alston, two carries, eight yards. And Caden Booza, three carries for four yards. For Hiram rushing, Gabe Hoskins, 11 carries for 21 yards. Egya Kaysen Saki, he had six carries for eight yards. Raquan Davis Herford, two carries, four yards. And Isaac Cervantes, one carry for four yards. Passing wise, Caden Booza for Ohio Wesleyan, 20 to 28, one interception, 182 yards, two TDs, uh, a long of 25. And one sack. Sean Tejada, 21 of 37, 200 yards, two TDs, a long of 25. He was sacked five times. Uh, receiving for Ohio Wesleyan, Josh Hurst, 10 catches, 101 yards, um, and one TD. Tyler Webb, four catches, 29 yards, one TD. Jaki Alston, three catches, 18 yards. And Devin Haley, one catch for 25 yards. For Hiram receiving, Jarris Green, six catches, 51 yards. He had two TDs. Raquan Davis Herford, four catches for 32 yards. Tristan Mullahan, three catches for 49 yards. And Jordan Townsend, three for 36. Punting wise, Gabriel Chapowski, three punts for a 43.3 yard average. His long was 47. Punting for Hiram, Chris Miller, seven punts, 259 yards for a 37.0 um, yard average. His long was 58. Punt returns, Jaki Alston, two for 26, and Drew Thornton, one for zero. Kick returns, Jaki Alston, two for 58. And for Hiram, Ricardo Jimenez, one for 12, and Bryce Kriegel, one for three. Defensively, 
uh, for Ohio Wesleyan, Briar Ramey, nine total tackles. He had one sack and one TFL. Seth Anderson, seven total tackles. Tyler Yanks, seven total tackles. He had two sacks and three TFLs. Uh, for Hiram, Alfred Pedro, five total tackles. Dylan Balaker, five total tackles. Cole Ture, five total tackles. And Tavon, Tan Vanta Rivas, five total tackles. Scoring recap, second quarter, 12-25. Jarris Green of Hiram, six-yard pass from Sean Tejada. Chris Miller kick was good. Hiram took the lead, 7-0. Second quarter, 4.30 to go. Ohio Wesleyan, Tyler Webb, 13-yard pass from Caden Booza. Sean Putt kick, we had a 7-7 ball game. Second quarter, 125 to go. Um, Gavin Cruiser, linebacker, safety on the Ohio Wesleyan quarterback. Hiram took the lead 9-7. to seven. With no time to go in the second quarter, Chris Miller hits a 39-yard field goal along of the year, and Hiram has the lead 12-7. Third quarter, Ohio Wesleyan. Hurst, seven-yard pass from Caden Booza. Tyler Webb pass from... Kalen Booza failed. The score was 13 to 12, Ohio Wesleyan. With 9.20 to go, number 25, Devon Haley, 11 yard run. Sean Putt kick was missed, and Ohio Wesleyan had a 19 to 12 lead. And then with 122 to go in the game, Jaron Green, eight yard pass from Sean Tejada. Uh, Kaysen Sackey's run failed, and the final score was Ohio Wesleyan 19 and Hiram 18. Thanks for joining us on Campus Nation. Again, remember, please get into, um, if you feel you like our broadcast on Campus Nation, uh, get a hold of Rick Phillips and let him know that you would like to be a patron of our broadcast. It's only $15. We have several games left on the season, and we would love to see your name up there as one of our supporters. Uh, for Rick Phillips and Al Matthews and Brody Garrett, thank you for joining us today on the Game of the Week. Good night, everyone.